radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Welcome. Yeah. Fade to Black. Bespoke Radio for the masses. Uh, yeah, man. How you doing? How you doing? Today's Tuesday, August 24th, 2021. 237 days into the new year. Only 138 days left. We are live from a bunker. A bunker somewhere in the middle of nowhere. That's right. A total undisclosed location. But it is beautiful. It's coming together. I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer Network, and KGRA, the Planet Race Hobbs. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Yeah, man. What is cracking? Ah. Tonight, oh man, tonight, Scott Walter. I got to say, I've been doing shows with Scott for, man, eight years. Eight years, maybe longer. Eight years, and the best, the absolute best, and uh, I just respect uh, I, I respect Scott. I respect his research. I respect his opinions. And you know what? He's a heck of a lot of fun to talk to. So Scott is here tonight. So buckle up for that. And uh, tomorrow night, Anjali is here. She is here for the first time. And you know what we're going to be talking about? The Mojave Desert and everything else uh, that uh, she has been out in public uh, speaking about lately. So that is going on tomorrow night right here. And then Thursday is another fader night with open lines all night long. All right. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. Scott Walter is here tonight. And um, I want to mention uh, to everybody coming up next month, it's, um, it's right around the corner, three weeks, is the Conscious Life Expo. And it is going on at the LAX Hilton. Now I've got links in the video description box below. I've got things out on social media. I will follow that up with some more for everybody to go and get your tickets. This is a live in-person event. We are doing, uh, two locations. That's right. Los Angeles and London, uh, both at Hilton hotels, by the way, I don't know if if Hilton is, uh, is a, is a sponsor. They should be. But uh, that's, uh, that's going on at the LAX Hilton. And this is um, uh, a little uh, smaller, scaled-down version of the Big Conscious Life Expo, of course, that goes on each year in February. But I will be there all weekend long hosting. I will have our Fade to Black booth there as well. And uh, it's three days. Also, uh, so that's in person. Uh, there will be... Uh, uh, streaming of both events in in Los Angeles and in London. And it's, it's, if you go to ConsciousLifeExpo.com, all of the speakers, the schedule, 
and what to do is all right there. And I believe there's a promo code you can try. It's Jimmy. It's really that simple. All right. Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Now, um, I brought in a bunch of sound deadening material uh, into the studio, and it's just too big of a room. It, it's much better than it was yesterday, and uh, but I still hear it, right? And I've just got to continue. I've got so much sound deadening material, but there's only so many hours in the day. So we'll, we'll see what happens uh, by the end of the day tomorrow. But uh, things are good. Things are good. I'm very, very happy uh, with this new bunker. And uh, what what was I going to say? I forget. I forget. It had something to do with the bunker, uh, but it didn't matter. Oh, by the way, did you catch me drinking before the show tonight? <sighs> yeah, I got caught. Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. Start right there. The sandbox is hashtag F2B on Twitter. We don't bite, and uh, um, I'm, let me go over here because my tweet deck, uh, right before the show, I closed it. I closed out tweet deck, and uh, there it is. It's back. <laughs> I need my tweet deck. I need my tweet deck. Man, that, that, these are great gifts. That's... <laughs> Julia of York. That is awesome. Okay. All right. Let's let's uh, let's move forward here. Um, hashtag F2B is a sandbox. Hello to everybody out there. Which camera? It's this one? This one. It, it, it's weird. I got a bunch of new cameras, and now they don't light up with the one that I'm using. And these are these high-end, you know, highfalutin you know, and you don't get a light. Come on, man. All right. Where am I at? Where am I at? Okay. It was announced earlier today. Um, very, very sad news. And I think we all knew something was up. Um, Charlie Watts, the drummer for the Rolling Stones for more than half a century has died. Charlie passed away peacefully in London in a hospital earlier, uh, today surrounded by his family he was 80 years old. And um, I'll say this about uh, Charlie. Let me say a couple of cool things. First off, when I was a kid, I just want to share this with you, this thought, because I was like the rock and roll dude, right? You know, uh, Bill Ward of Black Sabbath and, and you know, these these great drummers, you know, Neil Per and, you know, anyway. And, and Charlie, all of the stones, but Charlie had a very distinctive way of playing. And one of the things that I always noticed, and I used to, you know, kind of tease him about it with my friends, but he had this thing with a hi hat. So he would go up and then hit the snare, right? This thing that he did. And um, very hard to imitate for, for other drummers. But that was his style. That was his thing. And, and the sound, the sonic uh, thing from that was insane. And it, and it gave the Stones a groove. But when you watched him do it, it was almost like he was making a mistake. Right? This... this thing right <laughs> and you know and and as a musician you want to develop your own thing you want to do your own thing and 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 not be influenced by others and and charlie had that it was a, a very unique thing that he had going on um and and there you go very simple drum set always through his his career and wow wow just, just, just a sad day. 80 years old, lived the life for sure. But, um, and the other comment I want to make on this before I, uh, before I let this, uh, go is I remember about seven or eight years ago when I had made a comment about our heroes and Life has changed, but when back in the day, in the day, 
you would um, uh, go and uh, and this is leading up to MTV. But, you know, you had Hit Parader, you had Rolling Stone and, and, you know, these magazines and you would go and and you would read everything you could about your heroes. Right. And and it, it, it doesn't matter what the band was or who the guitar player was, who the who the singer was, the drummer it didn't matter. You would you would do that and you had a connection. And then MTV comes along and suddenly um, uh, you you were they were now in your living room and it wasn't magazines anymore it was it was different and we grew closer right to that and then live stuff and internet things and and you know put put the internet to the side so our heroes from the from the 60s and the 70s and the 80s you have to remember that that was 50 and 60 years ago. So if they were 25, right? That means today they're 75, they're 80. And, and Rick Springfield just turned 72, right? Heartthrob teen idol, Rick Springfield just turned 72. And, and what I had said uh, so many years ago was that I'd have all of these personal connections. And I know that all of us do, Unfortunately, and it, it's never been like this in the past, our generation and generations, we're going to start losing them. And it's going to affect us personally. I mean, Eddie Van Halen, that, that wrecked me. David Bowie wrecked me. Prince wrecked me. Right? And I can go on and on. So, you know, and, and here it is with Charlie today, and I started thinking about this. Wow. Wow. Okay. So I just wanted to, to I, this is on my mind, you know, obviously look behind me, you know, I'm a, I'm a music guy, right? Right. Okay. All right. Moving on. I got to talk about Australia. Let me hit this coffee again. Australia's air force chief says planning is underway for a new military Space Command. That's right. All of this amid growing global competition for supremacy in the skies well above the Earth. RAAF Air Marshal Mel Hupfield has confirmed a truly integrated space domain organization is on track to be established next year. Unlike the United States, which is a separate military service known as the U.S. Space Force, Australia is likely to opt for a joint command staffed by Air Force, Army, and Navy personnel. This is the sixth country to form a space command or space force. All right, I announced this yesterday. Now I've got, I've got the real news. NASA astronaut Mark Van de Hayes said today, that he pulled out of a spacewalk that was scheduled for today because of a pinched nerve in his neck. NASA canceled today's spacewalk at the International Space Station less than 24 hours in advance, citing a minor medical issue. Well, Van de Hey uh, didn't elaborate yesterday, but now we know. All right, let's get this show cracking. Check this out. Happy birthday to today, to Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle says he's only 48 years old. <laughs> I'm not buying it, man. I'm not buying it. I'm not. Dave Chappelle is not 48 years old. He's at least my age. He'd better be. All right. Heart OG drummer Michael DeRossier today is 70. That's right, Barracuda. When you think of the drums with heart, you think of Barracuda first, don't you? 70 years old. Armored Saint frontman John Bush today is 58. Our dead guy's birthday today is, I need a moment of silence, please, for the one and only Danny Joe Brown. 
1951 to 2005, died at the age of 53. Danny was the lead singer of Molly Hatchet. After succeeding founder Dave Hulbeck in 1976, and co-writer of the band's biggest hits from the late 70s. That was Danny Joe's voice on Flirting with Disaster. That's right, Whiskey Man, and of course, Dreams I'll Never See. And uh, that was an Allman Brothers band song. They, they played the slower version. And, well, anyway. Danny Joe left Molly Hatchet in 1980 because of chronic diabetes and pancreatic problems and rejoined the band in 1982, only to leave again in 1995 after suffering a stroke. Stroke. He had serious health issues. So after that, he moved into his mother's home in Davie, Florida, after becoming ill. And he, uh, he died there at her home on March 10th, 2005. At the age of 53. On this day in history, OTD, 79 AD. After centuries of dormancy, Mount Vesuvius erupts in southern Italy, devastating the prosperous Roman city of Pompeii, killing thousands. Fader fact. All right. Here you go. The town of Hawaii. The town of Hawaii, Arizona, that's W-H-Y, Hawaii, Arizona, was originally known as just the letter Y. And due to the Y-shaped intersection they had in town, right, with two roads, it changed its name to Hawaii due to an Arizona state law requiring town names to be at least three letters long. And that is your fate of fact. Why? Why? Tonight, we have very special guest Scott Walter is here. He is back with the Stones. And you know what? And now, this, can I, can I just mention that? Did you guys notice that? Um, you know, so I thought, you know, it's Scott Walter with the Stones, right? Okay, so I did a little play on that uh, over the weekend. And, and, you know, Scott is back with the Stones, and I capitalized it. And, you know, the Stones are back on tour. And, and so I... Be- wow. And Charlie Watts dies today. So, yes, that's right. Scott Walter is back with the Stones. Tomorrow night, Anjali is here for her first major broadcast interview. That's going down tomorrow night. So that means it's the first time guest on Fade to Black, too, as well. And Thursday night is another Fader night with open lines all night long. All right. What's that? Facebook Live and YouTube only source working for J Church Radio. No audio on the apps. And, uh, oh, man. Really? Okay, hold on. I'll fix that right now. Yeah, sure enough. They turned off. Okay. Well, they're working now. They're working now. I I, I, I don't know why that software decides to change from line to mic. And uh, I can only click save so many times. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you for that, Eric. Uh, we're back up and running. It's uh, not that big of a deal. Um, okay. Now, today, I'm not going to get into specifics, but today I logged in 50 phone calls. Now, before you say, wait a minute, that's impossible. No, it's not. I did it uh, starting at 8.30 this morning and uh, a lot of, of, of stuff going on. I'm not going to uh, get into the details of it. But let me say this. As, uh, as I went through the day today and having these conversations with uh, various individuals, you know, and I started to... I don't lose my cool. I didn't lose my cool today. I kept everything in check. But um, through all of this, as a matter of fact, I was supposed to be on with uh, Christina Gomez earlier today. I called up Christina. I said, Christina, I'm in the middle of this 
this uh, this storm right now, and uh, uh, I, I can't I, I feel bad about this. I can't be on the show today. Uh, I'll see if I can stop by and and so forth. So anyway, um, it was it was a day like that, and uh, so anyway, and I was uh, sitting on my back patio and uh, drinking some coffee, and you know, going through these phone calls. I started to think to myself as I'm listening to some of these comments. Why, why is it that the UFO community right now appears to be fractured, right? There's, there's this crack in it and, and a a couple of sides, maybe even three sides, maybe there's two cracks. And why are we susceptible to it? It's really, really strange. And I understand that the whole world is divided right now. I, I, I get that part. But um, the UFO community right now <clears throat> is, is fighting and, they, and, and when they don't need to be. And so I started to really put my, my head to this. And... And I went back and I remembered a conversation. So I want to share this with you. Remember a conversation that I had uh, many years ago, eight, maybe nine, with with somebody of note that is no longer with us. And, And I was told that the UFO community does nothing but stab each other in the back and that it it's part of it and that no matter who you're friends with or no matter what group you're associated with or or what faction no matter where where you are in all of this There is nothing but gnarly fighting going on. And I said, oh, man, I can, I can deal with it. And, and this person said to me, ignore all of it. And I said, why? I said, why? Why? And the advice was this, and it, and today, here we are in 2021 with everything that is going on, and this was said to me in 2013, that it doesn't matter. I was like, come on, that's it? And, and I was told to think about that. That no matter what, moving forward, no matter what, you're going to want to get involved. You're going to want to jump in. You're going to want to defend one group. You're going to want to defend this person. You're going to want to do this. You're going to do that. And, and no matter what, it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And now, I took that advice. And as everybody knows that the way that this show has evolved and grown, the one thing I've always had in the back of my mind, no matter who says what to you, no matter what you read, no matter what's going on out there, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't. I'm here to figure things out and the big picture and the answers to all of this have absolutely nothing to do with this community and the fighting and the backstabbing and this and that because nobody knows nothing. Nothing matters. That's it. So with this golden knowledge inside of my head, you know, and I've, I've, I've stated this and and, uh, expressed this over the years, but it keeps coming back. We keep going back to it. We keep fighting. And, and today, I'm going through these, and I'm just listening to this, and it's a long, protracted, so many moving parts, this, this thing. I don't want to say what it's about because it, it doesn't matter, 
right? And I sat back and I thought of this advice that I got so many years ago. It just doesn't matter. And my attitude on the phone changed. And no matter what, you're not going to suck me in. You're not going to do it. Whatever, man. Do your thing. It doesn't matter to me. It just doesn't matter. So I'm saying it again to this community. The drama, the thing, UAPs, UFOs, abductees, contactees, Tic Tacs, pilots, this, that, the UAPTF, the this, that. You guys want to just fight? Stop. None of it matters. E.T. showing up here and, and speaking to us, that, that matters. The rest of it, anybody starting drama, they don't know nothing. Nothing. Those saying yes, positive, they know nothing. <laughs> Negative, middle, objective, they, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Let's go out. Let's see some ships in the sky. Let's have a good time. Let's ma try to make contact. Uh, let's, let's see what happens in the future. Let's see what the government knows. O okay. All right. That's what matters. And that's it. Nothing else matters. Nothing matters. All right. There you go. I'm telling you, I'm ta I was at the end of my, all day I kept my cool. I just kept my cool. And, and I'm hearing these perspectives and, and one individual, I'm telling you, I was like at the edge of just about ready to go. You know what, dude, whatever the answer is no, I was right there. I just pulled myself back in, pulled it, pulled it back in. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. My life is great. I'm not going to get sucked in. It doesn't matter. So that's my advice. And I just wanted to share that with you today. And why, why nothing matters. There you go. You know, nothing, John Snow. <laughs> that is awesome. I'm going to take my break because when I come back, it is Scott Walter. That's right. Scott Walter tomorrow night. Anjali is here. And Thursday night is uh Vader night with open lines. Oh, did you guys see? Live on Facebook, Dave Scott in his backyard chasing a bear. Somebody somebody tweet Dave Scott and tell him I saw the video. <laughs> Dave Scott is out of his mind. He's like, I'm getting ready to do the show, but I got a bear in the yard. This is Fade to Black. I'll be right back. Stay with me. This is Nicole Church, daughter of you know who, and you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net, KGRA Radio. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the Fader Knots. If the game is rigged, change the game. It's a bolder cup with some bite. Game Changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder, but it's still dark. With wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich, balanced, full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day as an after-dinner coffee or anywhere in between. Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 50 percent off of your order today rivermooncoffee.com this is the only way forward this is fade to black 
Make contact. KGRARadio.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can get our podcast for just $2 per month. All you have to do is click on the podcast banner over at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hi, folks. It's troubling times, and fear is pushing emotions, which in turn pushes health the wrong direction. Do you ever get an ache because life is uneasy? Try Life Change Tea at GetTheTea.com. Life Change Tea works on your digestive tract, helping to move food through quicker and comfortably so your health is spot on. Life Change Tea may not help with world issues, but it will help with your digestive issues. A glass a day helps keep the intruders away. So, change your life today. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. If your health game is off, get on by ordering Life Change Tea. GetTheTea.com. And while you're on our site, look around at the great non-GMO organic supplements. And if you're a sales shopper, go to our specials page and see what's for you. I've been drinking the tea for 12 years, and I'm sure glad for its health benefits. Again, that's GetTheTea.com. GetTheTea.com. The tea that makes you go. Fade or not, when you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to Black is not your father's radio show. On the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the planet. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Matthew. You're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Scott Walter is here. He is back to give us the update on the Stones. And uh, rest in peace, Charlie Watts. Kind of kind of strange that we call this show Scott and the Stones and uh, the passing of Charlie Watts today. Feels weird. Synchronicity. We're going to take a deep dive into the world of ET and Disclosure as well. All of that tonight with Scott. He's an author and host of America on Earth, has been the president of the American Petrographic Services since 1990. Scott is responsible for the independent petrographic analysis testing uh, where the Kensington Rune Stone was brought for investigation back in 2000. He has been the principal petrographer in more than 5,000 investigations throughout the U.S., Canada, and Puerto Rico, including the evaluation of fire damaged concrete at the Pentagon following the attacks of September 11th 2001. All of his websites are right there over at jimmychurchradio.com. And I would like to welcome back to Fade to Black, the one and only Scott Walter. Scott, my man. How you doing, Jimmy? I had to cough. I had... <laughs> you got so excited. It's like, oh my God, I got a cough. <laughs> uh, Scott is back. You know, um, I was talking about this earlier tonight. Um, we've been doing shows together now for eight years, eight years. It's 2000, it that it's 2021, man. Jesus. <laughs> I know, right? You know what? I have to say one thing. I, first of all, you and I are friends and we, we get along great, but it seems to me that every show we do, 
gets a little bit better than the last one. I mean, is it just me or what do you think? No, no, uh, you're absolutely right about that. And, you know, the re there's a couple of reasons for that. One, um, our personalities happen to mesh, right? O okay, so, uh, which is rare as you get older. I, you know, I like less and less people, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, That's uh, sad but true. Yeah, right, right, right. So there's that part. But the other thing is this. Um, if if we go back uh, to the very first show, um, I'm sure it was about the Kensington Ruin Stone. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, I can't. Probably. I can't. It's too long ago. But but anyway, so you get the initial stuff out of the way. You get the basic stuff out, and and we did that. But then the shows after that, as our comfort zone um, uh, gets better between the two of us, that uh, there's a level of trust there. Um, and, and we are able to just freely converse. And so the audience where, um, it, you can go on any show, Scott, and you're going to get the same question, the Kensington runestone and let's right. talk about the hooked X. And then you go into wash, rinse, repeat. You've done it all before. <laughs> We don't have to do hooked X. We haven't done the hooked X in six years. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. So, but you know, <clears throat> Jimmy, I, I don't know if this is cool or not, but I'm just going to say that one of the things about you that I really like is I know you call your, your guests and, you know, you know, prepare for your, um, for your show. And, and it seems to me that we've done this so many times you should be able to just call me. We have a five minute conversation and off we go, but that's not the way it goes. You and I start talking about all kinds of stuff and nobody's listening. It's just you and me. Right. And, and that's cool. That's really cool. And, and you know what? And none of it gets onto the show. <laughs> <laughs> And it better thing. not this time either, oh, pal. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, right, 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 right. But <laughs> and I promise to, I promise to. Yeah, I, I have uh, said to you so many times, Scott. We got to stop talking. We we got to save this for the show. And yeah. you always come back with Jimmy. I'll remember. And you know what, Scott? You've never remembered once. <laughs> I'm, that's a I'll fact be next time coach i'm sorry what yeah. can i say i mean yeah did, see do we do what we're not supposed to do and start taking notes uh during a conversation and that's the exact opposite of what this show and you and i are all about but um it's really funny uh that you and i are talking about this because the audience never really hears um this side of things and it's really true um uh when scott and i talk on the phone it should be just a five minute conversation and it never is. Um, <laughs> it, it, it goes on and goes on because, uh, uh, what, what it's, it's, it's such an interesting conversation and we're, you know, we're learning and teaching and talking to each other. And the next thing, you know, Scott, how many times have we done it? Two hours, three <laughs> hours. Um, well, you know and we did it yesterday. Like, yeah. You know, the other part of this is, um, like I said, you know, we both trust each other. We do a lot of similar things. We've worked in similar industries. And, you know, it's not very often you have people that you can really confide in. And sometimes, let's face it, you've had some difficult things that you've been dealing with. I've had things I've been dealing with. And I feel perfectly comfortable in saying, hey, Jimmy, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. And it's not just because we're friends and I trust you, but you know what I'm talking about. We'll be talking about something in the industry, mm -hmm. about television or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there just aren't that many people that I feel comfortable talking to. And this isn't just a bunch of happy you-know-what. This is the truth. And, and I really appreciate that. I just want to say, man... I appreciate your friendship and uh, the brotherhood and the trust. That's, yeah, yeah, absolutely, it. absolutely. And uh, you know, another cool thing is uh, over the years before we've got so much to talk about tonight. But I can't tell you how many times where um, uh, I'm speaking to the audience now, where I've called Scott and said, uh, uh, "You know, I want you on the show this week. I want you on the show in two weeks." And it's never Scott. It's just okay. What day? What time? Let's do okay. this. And it's always been like that. And I remember, um, uh, I remember, check this out. This was a number of years ago. It was probably seven years ago. Um, I had a cancellation on coast and I was literally, this happened and I was, I was in like a supermarket and, 
and I had to book a guest for Coast for the next night. And I called up Scott. I was like, Walter, he'll never t- he'll never turn me down. And I called up Scott. He goes, what are you doing? I said, man, I'm in Costco. You remember this, man. And I was pushing his cart. I said, yeah. I, I need you uh, for Coast tomorrow night. Done. <laughs> right. Just like that, you know, and, and, and that is, uh, something that I appreciate so much, uh, for you, uh, from you over the years. Okay. Now, um, uh, before we get to the stones, I saw a post from you and I need you to refresh my memory, uh, from earlier this week. Um, I saw the post, I didn't do the deep dive into it. Uh, I was moving into a new home and, and I just, I, 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 I didn't have the internet at the time and uh, stuff going on, but you posted something about, uh, the wall in Texas and, uh, what's going on down there. Oh, you mean the, the stones down in, uh, in Texas that have all these carvings on them. And we were trying to, I went, I went down there twice and, the reason that I went down there so quickly and, and so many times is the landowner where these stones were found. His father, who really is the guy that started the whole story, knew the whole story, was was stage four cancer. And he wanted to talk to me about the stones. And believe me, I wanted to talk to him. So that was what the urgency was. And I went down there and we had really some great conversations. Eventually I'm going to post those conversations and it's a, it's a fascinating story, but um, he owned the property and he had a whole bunch of these stones as well of a, as a couple of his friends. And I was able to look at over 50 of these inscribed stones that had such a, 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 a varied uh, iconography, different languages, different symbols, uh, beautiful carving. Some of them were crude. Some of them were elaborate and they were all weathered. And, you know, at this point, it's been over a year. I've had a chance to do some testing. I was actually able to acquire a couple of these stones. And I think I understand what the story is. And it's it's one of those, it's connected to a story that 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 is in general already known that there were, have you ever heard of the term crypto Jew? Oh, we talked about this. Uh, the, well, the short answer is yes, <laughs> but, but let's talk okay. about crypto Jew. Okay. Well, basically these are people primarily in Europe um, starting, well, this is going back a long time, but basically people that were inwardly Jewish, but outwardly Christian, right? Because they lived in Catholic countries. They worried about inquisitions and, you know, not following the faith. So they would outwardly practice uh, Catholicism, but inwardly they were uh, they were Jewish. And this was something that was passed down through their families. And for generations, these people would secretly practice their faith, um, you know, in basements, um, in small gatherings with other people. Remember, you got to be very careful because it just takes one person to tip off the church and they come and knock on your door and you know, you could be you could be executed. So a lot of these people we know fled Europe uh, starting around uh, in the 1600s. They came to the Gulf region and settled in small communities in uh, Mexico and along the coast in southern Texas. But there was nothing known about a community like this that was up in central Texas where these stones were found. But beyond that, what's really fascinating is that some of these stones dated back to circa 1500. Mm-hmm. And this would be a couple hundred years older than some of these you know, known communities. So it turns out that people were coming over here to North America. Imagine that. I mean, I, I think we did a few episodes on, we did. on European cultures coming to North America, but this was a culture that came here starting around 1500. And we think 
that some of these people may have been brought over here by Christopher Columbus. Remember, everybody thinks about Columbus, he sailed the ocean blue in 1492, but he actually came over four times. And the last time was in 1502, 1501, 1502, which corresponds perfectly with uh, a couple of the stones that have th those same dates on them. And some people have suggested that Columbus himself may have been a crypto Jew. And, uh, of course, you know, you think of Spain and Catholicism and what was going on in the Inquisition and, and the brutality that was tied into the church. Oh, yeah. And uh, crypto Jew was, uh, if you were Jewish, that, that was the only path. I mean, that was, that was it. Uh, it, it. It makes a lot of sense. And then well, I've, I've seen some of the stuff inscribed on the stones, and it's, it's obviously Jewish. It's Hebrew. I it's mean, Hebrew, it's, it's, yes. it's, it's the Hebrew language. Now, um, I should say it's the Hebrew alphabet. And after talking to a few scholars that we sent some of these stones to, they said, yes, this is the Hebrew alphabet, but the language is actually something they called Ladino, which is a, uh, a mixture of Hebrew and Portuguese. So I had, I had never heard of the term Ladino before, but uh, that's what this is. And it actually makes sense. Um, but, you know, the big mystery for me was, OK, maybe we figured out who this community could have been. People that escaped Europe, they, they, they wanted to get away from persecution. It was either stay or die or convert or get the heck out of there and, and start fresh over here and take right, your chances. Right. Mm -hmm. But where did the weathering come from? on all of these stones, some of it is quite advanced. Well, what we think is going on is that these stones are actually grave markers. They're tombstones, if you will, that had been laid out for people in the community who had obviously passed. And like I, like I said, we're talking about central Texas, which is not a freeze-thaw environment, but it has a lot of rain, it has some freezing, and there is weathering on these stones. But the big question is, that all makes sense, but how the heck did they get inside of a cave um, along a cliff face next to a small river on this property and sealed up, and clearly they were stacked up, they were packed away and hidden? Why did that happen? That was the big mystery, and I think we've got that figured out too. Uh, so what happened? Well, first and foremost, we don't know for sure, but my speculation is these people clearly were hiding out. They did not want to be, um, they just didn't want to run into the Roman Catholic Church because they wanted to, um, you know, practice their faith, live in their community, do what they wanted. But there were Christian missions that were coming up into Texas, apparently, and they must have gotten word either from other people in a, a neighboring community, maybe the indigenous people that clearly they interacted with because we see indigenous people represented, teepees. And they got word and said, oh, my God, we got to get rid of these stones. So imagine this. What could have happened is these people suddenly were freaking out. They've got word that the church is coming. If they see Hebrew on our stones and some of the carvings that are Egyptian, uh, that's not going to be tolerated. So they rounded these things up, we think, and sealed them up into this cave. And, you know, we don't know what happened, if it worked, if they survived. But I think that's probably the most plausible explanation. What do you think, Jimmy? You no, know, it makes sense. <clears throat> and and you, if you think about it, uh, there's, uh, you know, let's put everything to the side for a second. Back then, you couldn't obviously pick up the phone and call 911. There's problems on my property, no. right? Uh, there no. is no uh, law. <laughs> there isn't anything there to protect you. You have to do what you have to do in the moment. So just imagine living like that, right, with that kind of pressure. So what are you going to do? Well, you know what? Get everything out of the yard, right? <laughs> let's <laughs> let, let's uh, let's uh, let's replace it with Christian crosses, <laughs> and, right? And yeah, that's a good point. I never yeah. thought of that. That's probably what they did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it makes yeah. sense. So, um, so uh, the other part of the update. Uh, uh, what else can you tell us? 
Well, uh, you will be seeing something on television. And, you know, Jimmy, I got to be honest with you. I'm not sure how much I want to tell you about this. Oh, are we going to do of, that again, Scott? Are now, we going to do... Are we going to do that right now live on the air? Or are we really going to do this? <laughs> no, no. Uh, if, if I explained it to you privately, you would totally understand. But I, I, the one thing I want to make clear, it's not my show that they're going to be on. It's going to be on somebody else's show. And I was tipped off when another group was down there filming these stones. And the person that they interacted with was not the person that I, well, I did inter interact with that person as well, but it wasn't the person that was gravely ill because there's some complicated relationships down there, as you can imagine. Sure. And I do know this much, the, um, the people that were down there that uh, are going to air this program were not allowed access to the site where the stones were found. So... Um, I can tell you this, I think what's probably going to happen is you're not going to hear the story that you just heard from me about what we think these stones are. You're going to hear something probably related to a treasure hunt. And I'll just leave it at that. Mm, television. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Nothing we... like television. And, I, and let's not go there. Uh, <laughs> hey, right but listen, uh, it's not a secret that sometimes both you and I have been frustrated with some of our experiences with television, but I will say this, and you understand this, it's a powerful medium, and if you have a message and you want to get it out there, it's a great way to go. Sometimes it comes at a price, sometimes you have to compromise uh, certain things, but you know, there's, there is a line that I know you and I will not cross yep. and I have never crossed that line and I never will. So, um, you know, that's the nature of the beast, right? Yeah. yeah and we can leave that right there, but, uh, I have to ask you this, um, America on earth is, is now a brand, right? It's a brand. It's, yeah. you know, well yeah. done. Um, is, is there a future is, can you give us an update with America on earth? Is there something we can talk about? Well, you know what I, at this point, well, let's, let's back up about four years, five years, four or five years ago when America on earth was done, right? We did three, three seasons, 39 episodes. H2 was sold. We we're riding high number one show on the network at the time. And I remember my agent said, Scott, I don't know what network doesn't renew its number one show. You're going to end up on big history. So I said, okay, great. And, and uh, they said, by the way, we'd like you to help us out with another show that is not getting permits to dive. So they need some content. Can you help us with Pirate Treasure of the Knights Templar? And, and I said, sure. And the, the beautiful thing about that opportunity, and I'm so grateful for it, and thank you to History Channel for that, um, they basically said, we need some content about the Templars. Can you help us? And I said, well, sure. And they said, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, the story starts in Jerusalem. Let's go there. <laughs> and we did. And literally, Jimmy, we were making it up as we went along. It was now, a great series. I, I, I loved I, I had, I loved every episode. It was great. It, yeah. And, and I had some ideas of the, some things that I wanted to do that I thought might connect with the storyline we were working on. And thankfully, things worked out. And eventually, we ended up going to Madagascar. We went to Goa, India, and we made some discoveries there that went were to Portugal. Incredible. To Portugal, yep. yeah, to Tomar, yep. a Templar city. My God, that was incredible. But it was a great opportunity, and I was really happy that um, I, I, I had that opportunity. There was some controversy at the end, it had nothing to do with me, but. Uh, that silver bar, that hundred pound silver bar that was found with the, you know, the inscription on yep, it. Yep, yep, yep. Um, and and they gave that to the uh, president of Madagascar. And as it turns out, UNESCO got involved, and it was a huge mess. History Channel didn't want any part of it. I can't say that I blame them. And uh, you know, well, that what was Scott, that. what Scott is referring to, and it was actually very cool to watch. Uh, that was some pretty good drama there. Was yeah. a, a, a a pirate cove, right, with yeah, with sunken yeah, yep. pirate ships in it, and which were rumored to be there. And there was a lot of history and 
uh, that certainly indicated that this was a possibility. So that's it. Let's, you know, let's dive and let's see what we could find. Well, they ended up finding it. <laughs> and uh, you got to be careful what you wish for, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what, Jimmy? There was no question that there were pirate ships that were there was uh, three, in that right? cove. It was a well-known hideout for pirates in the 16, late 1600s, 1700s. And they would get around the southern coast of Africa. And once they got on the east side heading to the far east and to India... Um, they knew that they were safe because back at that time, uh, the European ships from England and France and some of the other countries, would um, they would be patrolling the west side of Africa because at that time they were uh, controlling the slave trade. Sure. And that's that was the big money back then. So if the pirates got through there to the other side, that's where they could relax and hang out repair their ships or if they were so worm ridden that they were not salvageable, they just ditched them there. They sunk them. And so there was a graveyard of ships. And, um, and as you saw, they actually found some treasure. Now I'll tell you a little secret about something that Barry Clifford, who was the co-host of that show and a very famous treasure hunter, uh, he found the Wittes ship off the coast of Cape Cod, which is the richest, um, treasure ship ever found off the North American coast. And uh, he told me privately that that bar that he found, there was more down there. And it's, as far as I know, it's still there. It's still there and, because UNESCO got involved and said no more diving. That's right. Show now, is over. <laughs> and the show is over. And But, you know, the, the, the big question that I got hit with after that show repeatedly to this day, people said, Hey, the claim was, is that wasn't a bar of silver, that it was a bar of lead. Mm -hmm. And they said, what was it, Scott? You're the geologist. You tell us. And I said, well, I would love to tell you, but the truth is I never saw it. I never saw it or, or had it in my hands, but here's the other side of the coin on that thing. To me, it really doesn't matter because in the pirate culture, lead, was just as valuable as silver. Uh, they used it for bullets. They used it for for, for weapons, um, um, and and they used it for ballast, just like they used silver. Silver was not worth a lot, and basically, lead and silver were about the same value. So it really didn't matter. It was uh, it it held the same value in the pirate culture at that time. And to this day, I still don't know if it was silver lead. So don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take our break right here. Our guest tonight, the one and only Scott Walter. We've got a lot to discuss. It's been a while since uh, Scott has been on the show. It's been about, what, probably a year? Has it been that long? I think it's been about nine months. Yeah, yeah, yeah about nine months. Our guest tonight, Scott Walter. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. This is Fade to Black. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this quick break. Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station, Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. This is Billy Carson with ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Forbidden Knowledge TV has just reached its one year anniversary. That's right. One year, and as a show of appreciation, we are giving all new subscribers a free 30-day trial of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. That's 30 days to binge watch thousands of movies, documentaries, conferences, workshops, lectures, yoga classes, meditation courses, and so much more. So log on to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv from your computer or mobile device, or get the Forbidden Knowledge TV app on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, iTunes, or Google Play today, and use coupon code 30 days free. That's coupon code 30 days free on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv today. Because you never got that pony you always wanted. <laughs> Damn it. Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network. 
ZGRADB.com. Listen, I know and you know that you've always wanted your first crystal skull. Or maybe you're a collector just like me, but you just don't know where to go to find the real thing. Then I met Carolyn Ford over at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Carolyn is the guardian of Einstein, one of the most respected ancient crystal skulls in the world. All of her unique skulls have been imprinted sitting with Einstein in his sacred lodge and are carved from the finest gemstone and materials. Imprinting is the process of receiving the ancient wisdom from the master skull or master computer. Einstein, the ancient crystal skull. To see Carolyn's current collection of crystal skulls, just visit her store at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com or click on the banner over on our site. Don't forget to use the promo code JIMMY at checkout to receive 10% off of your order today. That's promo code JIMMY. Finding your first or next crystal skull is easy. Just visit EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Hello, I'm and you're listening to my main man, Jimmy Church, on jimmychurchradio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church, Fade to Black, on the Game Changer Network and the KGRA Digital Broadcast Station. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're of the Honey Brothers. <laughs> we are of the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official Fade or Not by just going to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright-Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the Lucky Pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black, across the globe on the Game Changer Radio Network and the one and only KGRA Radio, The Planet. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Scott Walter is here. And tonight, um, I'm, I'm going to guarantee you one thing, an open-ended conversation. And I'm going to catch, catch uh, Scott um, off guard as often as I can. And then, inevitably, this is what will happen, though. Scott will try to stump the panel. He's going to ask me a question. He's gonna, you know, so, Jimmy, uh, what do you know about... And I'm going to get angry. So that will happen a couple of times tonight, too. And uh, <laughs> But, but Scott, um, uh, I, I actually want to change gears. Uh, 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 we're still talking about rocks. Don't worry about that. We're going to stay in the geo world. But, right. but uh, it, it, it's, it's about UFOs, too, as well, and E.T. Because <clears throat> you have seen and studied and looked at and acquired... Um, uh, some stones from Mexico yep. and I have uh, uh, also you and I have talked about this a lot but um, I have held in my hands and and seen things as well um, 
so let's talk about that for a second. Um, sure. Where are you with uh, the provenance, um, the dating, the weathering? I'm giving you a bunch of questions right in a sure. row. You know, what's your vibe on what is coming out of Mexico? Well, <laughs> that's a that's a complicated question because the truth is I have looked at artifacts that have alien depictions on them from about four or five different locations in Mexico, all the way from northern Mexico down to southern Mexico, the Yucatan, and, uh, and western Mexico. And I'll be honest with you, one group, well, if you watch the episode that we did um, a couple of years ago, we did one on these artifacts and the group of, of artifacts that I saw in the Yucatan region or just north, uh, they were fake. They were clear fakes. You might recall the one that had UFO on it. Yes. yes. <clears throat> and, yes. you know, those weren't even really very good. They, they were bad. <clears throat> so so those were not legit. Everything else that I've seen appears to be legit. Now, in the episode, you might recall that we sent off uh, some adhesive, some of the glue that was um, some of the uh, inserts that were placed on these artifacts, which are absolutely beautiful, by the way. As far as artwork goes, it's, it's just, there's just something about it, right? It's beautiful, but it's also captivating and mysterious, and uh, I just love them. But, a f you know, several of them have this adhesive. So I knew that the rocks could not be dated. We know the rocks are old. The question is, how old is the artifact? Well, I thought maybe the glue would be something that we could test. And uh, I collected some of that. I sent it off. But actually, the first time was not the glue. It was actually resin inside of a pipe. I think I've told that yes, story. Yes, yes, yes. And we got this date back, uh, 5400 BP before present. And, of course, my jaw I hit the floor. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Well, that was just the beginning. Because... To date, I've probably tested close to a dozen. And the date ranges I have got are between about 8,000 BP to just over 19,000 years before present. Um, that is 17,000 years BC. And, you know, of course, that's head spinning numbers and you know, the well, first and foremost, are those numbers legitimate? Um, okay, and if they uh, are, uh, what does this mean? What yeah, does it tell us? Right? Yeah, let me let me stop you right there. Um, Go ahead. When uh, I first was presented, uh, you know, probably 50, 75 of these artifacts, I was told then um, uh, by, by a friend, he had said that the dating of the adhesives was 15,000 years old. Now, right then, I, I I was standing there with Richard Dolan, and we're, we're holding these uh, artifacts. And Now, you get hit with 15,000 years, you're immediately at, come on, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so this 17,000-year date, was that for the adhesives? Yes. Yes, it was. Very interesting. That, that's a, that's, okay. that's okay. a tough one to wrap your head around, man. Okay, well, here's the thing. Let's let's. I mean, yes, it is. When I first got these dates, you know, back, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I mean, I didn't even know what to think, right? But I just did. Uh, you know, I just called a timeout and said, <laughs> okay, let's think about this. Right. <laughs> what is the other? What are some other possibilities that could be going on here? I mean, I want to jump all over this and get excited, but you got to tap the brakes, right? Yes. So, the first thing that I came up with is. Let's say somebody took mammoth bone or uh, a ma mammoth tusk or a mammoth tooth or uh, some other Pleistocene or glacial age creature, which are actually not that rare. They're actually quite common sure. if you deal in the fossil world. Grind it up, mix it with a modern adhesive and use that. What would you get if you test that? I don't know the answer to that yet because I haven't run the test, but I'm going to. And so could that be uh, an explanation? The answer is maybe. The other possibility 
is an ancient material. It's actually an ancient tree sap called copal that uh, apparently is found in the jungles. And it's old tree sap that hardened and can be thousands of years old. Again, ground up and used as an adhesive. They can can reactivate it. They can heat it up. And now you've got a glue there. Would that give you a C14 date of that age? Maybe. Again, it needs to be tested. But like I said, before you get all excited about the dates, you got to make sure you got to eliminate other possibilities. And I know you understand that. Yeah. Yeah. And I really appreciate that. Uh, You have to approach this as a skeptic. You drop 15, 17,000 years old. It is a pump the brake situation. When I was, I was holding some of these artifacts, which by the way, are frigging beautiful. Right. Yes. And, it's just yes. like, uh, and then, you know, and I'm holding, um, I re- I've, I've got pictures. I think I've sent them to you, but I was holding this knife. Knife is beautiful. And, and Richard and I immediately are, you've got to go into skeptic zone. I didn't want to poop poop because it may be real. Right. But right. the thing is they are so beautiful. And then wait a minute here. 15,000 years old because it looks, I mean, it looks old, but it doesn't look 15,000 nope. years old. No. Nope. And then I remember, so I'm looking and then I thought there's something weird about this knife and I'm looking at it and the butt of the knife, right? The heat, whatever you call the, the, this part, you know, the back of the knife. Yeah. <clears throat> had this most beautiful alien face. Face. Right. And, um, like the perfect gray, right? The perfect, the iconic, it's like the cover of Whitley Strieber's communion, right? On, on, on the heel of this knife. And it's, it's too good to be true, Scott. It's, it's too good now. Um, so there's that part, but then you've got this 15,000 year old glue there and it looks old. It doesn't look 15,000 years old, but then. Um, you're the guest on the show, but I, and I'm, I'm telling this story, but it no, is, it. It, but it is for context. So, um, the researcher that presented me all of these, uh, artifacts then, uh, sends me uh, a video of them in the jungle, uh, down in Mexico location unknown, right? Didn't disclose that to me. And they hike for like two days. Um, into this mountain, go into this cave and bring out of this cave a, a statue of this seated thing, person. And it is, Scott, it's got to weigh a couple of tons. Okay. Yeah. It's probably four or five feet tall, four or five feet wide. And it's seated and it's gorgeous and it's covered in mud. And uh, they've got it on ropes, right? And there's like 20 dudes pulling this thing out of the cave and and down. They get it. They get it out of the jungle and onto a truck and they bring it back. But anyway, they start to clean it up, you know, water and, and stuff. They don't want to damage it. They're being gentle, but it's starting to reveal itself. Now, if somebody is hoaxing, how do you hoax uh, you know, a one or two ton uh, chunk of marble, you know, whatever this gorgeous stone is. And it was like, uh, mm-hmm. my memory was like maroon and green. But, um, and so I'm looking at, and they're doing these close ups in the high res video. I'll get to the point. You can see the cracks in it. And, and, and so the carving was where the crack, where it offset, right? So now the crack is like this. I'm over here on this camera yeah. with you. The crack is offset, but you can see the the carving on the top is continuous. So right. how do you hoax that? that <laughs> that's pretty crazy. And this thing looked authentic. So anyway, they're doing right. They're going down and you can see alien faces in in uh, around the legs. and you can see this these different e t references all over this. And I'm telling you, it was bigger than me in a chair. You know, it was all one piece. And, and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, well, I thought this was all BS. This looks real to me. Yeah. And I don't know. And I've always pictured a, a, a factory 
of uh, workers, right, with Dremels creating the right in a, in a in a in an assembly line, cranking out these artifacts, and then they pull this giant sculpture um, out of this cave. It was incredible. So I'm 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 at a loss, man. I don't I don't know which way to go with this. Well, let's let me tell you about a couple of things. There was a group that contacted me about a year and a half ago who were um, excavating artifacts from caves and from under the ground. Some of the things that I saw were base relief carvings, basically a slab of rock where they carve 3D images. I mean, it's three dimensional and it's a scene. And it's spaceships and it's aliens and it's females with breasts and one of them is giving birth and there's inlays all through it. It was stunning. It was six feet high by eight feet wide. It probably weighed, like you said, uh, one or two tons. Um, it was just magnificent. And the guy that I, uh, I contacted was working with these people. The problem was, and I'll just leave it at this, the reason I didn't jump on a plane and go down there immediately is because the area is very dangerous. And he made that quite clear, especially being an American. He said, I, I wouldn't recommend you come down here. But but here's the thing. what What is the end game if these things are some type of and I don't even like to use the word hoax because it's an intentionally deceiving somebody. These things, like you said, are stunningly beautiful. And it doesn't matter if they were connected to aliens or an ancient culture. They're gorgeous and they're valuable. They're worth a lot of money. So from that standpoint, are they trying to double and triple their money by burying them? And, you know, it doesn't really make sense. So I, I have to say right now the evidence for me, is leaning towards their authentic. I'm not 100% there yet, but I'm pretty good. Now, I got to tell you about something else that just happened with some of these other artifacts, Jimmy. I've, I haven't said to anybody before, but I spent quite a bit of time here in the last three, four months with some of these artifacts, looking at them carefully under the microscope. And when you look at the carvings, okay, the grooves of the carvings, when you look at a lot of these things, the, 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 the images that are carved on the lines themselves jump right out at you. They're beautiful, right? Well, under the microscope, I could see that somehow, some way, and you aren't going to do it with a paintbrush, but these dark lines at the bottom of these grooves are actually painted in there. And we're talking about something that's, <laughs> that's like, less than a millimeter in width. I mean, it's very, very small. You can't do it by hand with a brush. How the hell did they, and they're perfect. You've seen mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the beautiful artwork on some of these. The other thing that is very compelling to me, extremely compelling, is that there are depictions of planets, of uh, what looks like suns, of exploding planets, of all Me kinds. You meteors, know meteors, comets. Yes, all this stuff. Right. But here's the thing that's fascinating. There is a there is known mathematics uh, when it comes to the distances between the sun, the moon, and the earth. And I'll give you an example of something you may not have ever thought about before. Do you ever notice when there is a, say, a lunar eclipse, when the moon gets between the sun and the earth, and it creates this diamond halo effect when it's perfectly lined up. Think about this for a second. How the hell can it be exactly, not close, but exactly the same size as the sun? It has to be an exact distance for that to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And also when the moon or the earth gets between the sun and the moon, the shadow of the earth is exactly the same size as the moon. Mm -hmm. So think about that. So, but these are mathematical ratios on these artifacts. Some of the artifacts that I have, the same ratios exist, including the megalithic yard. So wrap your head around that on top of all this other stuff what we're talking about. Does it prove that they're real? Probably not, but um, you know, what is the bar? 
when do we say, you know, this is real, this is old, it's authentic? And that begs the question, who made them? Was it the ETs that made them? Was it the indigenous culture that was revering this, somehow acquiring this knowledge? And Jimmy, have you ever bought or do you have any of the artifacts that have these strange symbols on them? They're almost like geometric patterns. They look almost like an alphabet. But what I've noticed, and I, I recorded over 1,000 of these symbols on multiple artifacts, and not one of them repeats. Not one. They're, each one is different. So what are we talking about? Are we talking about a language? Are we talking about an alphabet? Are we talking about possibly symbols that represent telepathic communication? I'm not saying I know the answer. I'm asking you. You're the host. You have the answers. Tell me. See, I told you he would do this. He would hit me with a question that I couldn't answer. That's number one tonight. The, the thing is, is um, uh, I have read about, noticed, and looked at exactly what you're referring to. And I, I, I give the benefit of the doubt here where I think that it is uh, an alphabet, but it's organic in that um, each, each symbol is created for that moment, for, for whatever it is. And it could be speech. It could be thought. It could be that it could be, the, but um, it is, it is, uh, it, it doesn't repeat. And if you go back uh, to um, uh, the movie Arrival, think about this. In the movie Arrival, where they were trying to figure out the writing of the aliens, and then as it turned out, it was organic thought processes, right, in real time, and that's why nothing repeated uh, some things repeated, right? You're having the same thought of the word oxygen or or whatever, right. Um, right. but um, uh, the rest of it was organic. So that's that's what I've always thought about that, and how wonderful that would be if that's what it turns out to be. Um, some type of organic, non-repeating, caught in the moment type of communication or recording thought. So that was you that was what, always my you know take what, Jimmy? on it. That is really an that's a good explanation. I got to give you credit for that. I didn't really think about it beyond just, you know, telepathy, that this is a message that we're having a conversation. And what's interesting on a lot of the artifacts that I have is the collective of symbols, the, the, the biggest group of them oftentimes are in the head, in the, in the upper head, you know, where the brain is. Uh, but I did, I'd never thought about the fact that it could be a combination of things. Uh, the collective, as you said, maybe maybe some of it is speech, some of it's telepathy, maybe it's a combination. I never thought about that before. Good answer. Uh, you came through in the clutch. Well, it, it, because they don't repeat, and it's impossible no. not to repeat anything. I don't care how creative you are, you're going to stumble, right? If you're hoaxing, right? <laughs> Right, right. If you're hoaxing, exactly. you're going to exactly. you're going to make a mistake. And uh, there's another part to this before we get to the break. If they are being created in a uh, ET stone factory somewhere, multiple locations in Mexico, how come somebody hasn't gotten caught? You know, we we everybody makes mistakes. You know, there's something happens. Somebody's owed money, jealous girlfriend, whatever. Somebody gets called out. And the next thing you know, everything is exposed. No matter what it is. Could be a bank yeah. robbery, right? It doesn't matter. Um, why is it that they've been able to get away for uh, with it for such a long time? Because the, we're not talking about two stones. We're talking about tens of thousands, thousands. that yep. have surfaced. Um, right. and, and non-repetitive, some, the, some of the imaging repeats, but the, 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 the artifacts in themselves are all, each one is fundamentally different from everything else. It's very, it's, I, I don't know how you, uh, creatively hoax for so long without getting caught. It's, 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 it's pretty impressive. I'm not saying I'm backing it up. But nobody's yeah. been caught and, and nothing has been revealed. There's a lot of pictures on Twitter right now of these stones, by the way. Right. 
I will say this, Jimmy, the preponderance of evidence. If you ask me right now, now I'm going to be you asking me the tough question. Scott, if you had to say, are these real or are they fake? I got to say right now, the weight of evidence with the caveat that we still have some questions we need to try to answer. But right now, if I had to put the money on the table, I'd say that the vast majority that I've looked at are probably legit. Wow, that's crazy, isn't it? And is um, um, now you know how it is, uh, you know, growing up where th- your elders constantly told you, Scott, if it's too good to be true, <laughs> come on, use your head now, okay? Yep. Um, you're not going to get a spider monkey for a dollar in the mail, Scott. All right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, right. But Jimmy, Jimmy, I, I'm not, this isn't my gut, you know, well, I, I take that back. <clears throat> it isn't just my gut. I have done a lot of testing. I've done a lot of observations. I've, I've, you know, written down over a thousand characters to find one that repeated. Right. Now, there were some that had sort of the same base, you know, foundation, but it had different offshoots on it. So if it is this thought thing you're talking about, maybe we're talking about oxygen, but in a different context, right? Yes, 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 yes. No, I'm going to agree. Look, I I, I want all of, uh, not all, I want want, uh, this discovery to be authentic and real. Um, There's another, uh, for me, a very uh, positive part of this. We're talking about cultures in, in Mexico and Central America that have um, obviously um, high knowledge of astronomy, of mathematics, of calendars, oh, yeah. yep. of angles, of geometry, um, uh, that always, always to me tied to something else. And I can mention the Mayans and the Aztecs and 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 so forth. But but I think it's an obvious thing. Uh, um, uh, uh, I was going to go with some other cultures, but um, that this tie-in makes way too much sense. And the look of these artifacts and you combine it into the cultures of Central and South America, they 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 match up. They look yeah. similar. They feel correct. So yeah, yeah, it would be wonderful if uh, something uh, breaks out here and proves these to be authentic, especially with everything else that's going on uh, you know oh, yeah. with ET yeah. right now. Uh, where are we at? Oh, I got to take a break, man. We almost blew through a commercial break. Let me get straight to it. Our guest tonight, Scott Walter. We've got a lot more to discuss. It's Scott and the Stones. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I'll be right back. More with Scott after this short break. Stay with us. We listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk. Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. KGRARadio.com ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carzonel, tiburón. Y los invito para que escuchen mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. Do you want to be an official fade or not? Of course you do. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Just go to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. This is Jimmy Church, and I invite you to attend the 20th Annual Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo live and in person this September 17th, 18th, and 19th at the LAX Airport Hilton. Connect with exhibitors, community, thought leaders, and friends as we begin to recreate the world. You can also watch the expo from the comfort of your own home, live stream from the main stage in Los Angeles and from the main stage in London. Truly a global simulcast event broadcast around the world. Live stream and in-person expo tickets are available now i'll be your host all weekend long from los angeles and on friday it's my ancient secrets and earth mysteries themed segment with james keenan 
Sheehan, Caroline Corey, and William Henry. And on Saturday, Daniel Sheen and I sit down for a one-on-one interview live. We have an amazing lineup of 25 speakers, including Bashar, Gail Thackeray, Kimberly Meredith, Whitley Strieber, Stephen Bassett, Daniel Brinkley, and Lisa Gar. Please visit ConsciousLifeExpo.com for tickets and info. That's ConsciousLifeExpo.com. And use that promo code JIMMY for a special discount. Fader Knots. When you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. <laughs> KGRARadio.com. You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is Revolution. The Revolution will not be televised. The revolution is on radio. Ciao. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Our guest tonight is Scott Walter, and he is... Okay, Scott, we're going to talk about this in just a second. He's he's showing me stuff. More with Scott in just a second. I want to talk to you about Virtual Shield. Virtual Shield VPN. You need your own VPN. You need it now more than ever. I run Virtual Shield on all of my computers here in both studios on both coasts. So, uh, it's simple. You get 50% off today. Click on the video description box below. The link is right there for Virtual Shield uh, VPN. It says right there, virtualshield.com forward slash fade to black. You can also type that into your uh, search bar if you want to go that route. You can click on the links over at jimmychurchradio.com. All of that will get you Virtual Shield VPN for 50% off today. And the important thing is, really... Run in secret. You don't want anybody to know what you're doing. You don't want anybody to know. All right. There's there's a weird thought, and I uh, I, I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. Let's say you've got uh, an itch, or you've got something weird going on, and you do a search for whatever this medical thing that you're going through, whatever it could be. You do that search. And the next thing you know, the advertisements pop up for this medical thing that you're going through. There's that. But that information is sold. 
That stuff is sold. And if you think it's private, your medical, your little private little medical issue, that little thing that only you know about, no. Every insurance company in the country, <laughs> doctor, everybody knows about your little private itch. Get Virtual Shield VPN today. Our uh, guest tonight is Scott Walter, and I'm watching him scratch right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not a, scratching. What are you Scott, talking Scott, about? Scott is scratching. So um, Scott <laughs> is uh, 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 holding up to the camera uh, a knife, uh, a ceremonial knife, and uh, um, which, uh, which oddly enough, and I'm going to tell you about my knife in a second. The, See all the symbols? Yes, 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 yes. And, and that is so intriguing to me because it is saying something and it's uh, astrological. It's it's there's there's something going on. But what I wanted to mention was the serrated edge that is there. The ser- um, it is uh, um, what? How do I want to say this? It's an artistic serration, right? Yeah. Yes. I, yes. But I suppose if you hacked at somebody's neck for a while, <laughs> you would you would do some damage. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that would hurt. that would sting like the dickens. That would that would. And so the knife that I saw, it's a ceremonial, it's an aesthetic, it's an artistic knife. Um, but the, the serrated edges that I saw, Scott, were like glued in teeth. That's what they look like, but that's not what they are. No, this no, is... not yours. The one that oh. I saw. All oh. right. It had these square... Uh, teeth along the edge. You're you're the serra- serration. <laughs> serration, serrated edge. Yeah, yeah th- that edge is carved in. These right. were glued in. Really? Yeah, and it was really cool looking. And the one that I saw was uh, uh, like a, a purple marble. Um, it was it was truly incredible. And yeah. but uh, so anyway, what I wanted to say was, uh, Scott, you showed me. The butt end of the knife. What is there? I want you to to, to describe to everybody what's 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 on the end of that knife. Well, actually, what it is is it's a little sitting dude, right, with the almond shaped eyes, and there is an interesting symbol that has more um, aliens right here. If you look closely, you see right. that. Right. Yep. 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 And then yep. on the back. We have a bunch of the symbols that we were talking about, and this guy's sitting in a you know he's in a sitting position, but it's on the back it's mostly symbols and but like you said, if you look carefully, even on this side you can see a little head right there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's it's like everywhere you go. This one I don't even know if you can see it, but right here there is a thing coming out of like a sphere in this guy's hand. And if you look close, do you see that face? Yes. Right there. Yes. It's like upside down. Yep. But it's creepy as hell. And most of the time when you see f- carvings on a flat surface, it's in profile, right? But this one is looking at you straight on. Right. And maybe a, with the head turned just a little bit. And you don't see that very often. So, I, I mean, I don't know, man. It's almost like somebody was tripping on acid or something i mean when i look at these things there's a part of me that sees that but then the closer you look the more intelligence you see the mathematics the geometry the astronomy that you talked about and the sophistication it actually starts to blow your mind i mean the closer you look the more you see and i just i you know the the gut the gut level part of me says there's an intelligence here. These things are not somebody's knockoff artwork that they're selling for cheap. Well, you These know, things I, are beautiful. They are beautiful. And okay, let's say they're all hoaxed, right? They're just a factory. That artist needs to be celebrated. <laughs> that artist Absolutely. is good. I mean, Absolutely. And he can't be the only one. No. They're all good. Yes. I mean, most of the pieces I've seen are are outstanding now there's a few that are a little rougher but not many i mean most of this stuff is just 
beautiful. Yeah. I love it. I yeah. love it. You can see the imitation ones, right? <laughs> We're like, yeah. yeah. No, no, no. Pass. No, that's not the real stuff. No, no. no. <laughs> when, when you see something that says NASA on it, you know, it's like, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> not so much. No, right. No. Okay. Now, um, let's, uh, let's talk ET for a second. Um, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, you, you got your feet wet. Um, it's, it's been almost a couple of years now in to the UFO game and it caught you by surprise. Oh yeah. Um, uh, let's, 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 let's talk about that. Where are you on your journey right now? Well, this, this indoctrination that you're talking about was the Conscious Life Expo that, that you invited me to. And, you know, I, I, I got to give you credit because it was really something, uh, the, the majority of, of the conference was subject matter that really wasn't in my wheelhouse. And, uh, but, you know, I, I, I thought it went extremely well. And I met a lot of wonderful people that are in this um UFO community, for lack of a, another term, and I met some really incredible people. And actually, the, some of the people I met actually got me turned on to the Texas Stones. That's where I got the lead to uh, to find out about those and then go investigate them. But <clears throat> you know, after that, it was only a few months later that you know I was contacted by a person with uh, with NASIC, actually, the National Air and Space Intelligence Center who said that they were looking for uh, reaching out to people they thought could help them with the disclosure program, which was um, a relatively new program that was uh, initiated in 2017. Um, uh, you know, our, our government decided that this deep secrecy, nobody can talk, we're not going to let the public know what's going on about ETs, suddenly did a 180 degree turn. <clears throat> and so they, they, asked me, you know, this person asked me if I would be willing to help. And of course, I went through the usual vetting process. I said, well, how do I know you are who you are? And we went through that process, including a personal visit. And we actually had a second personal visit. Uh, this person was with us about a week ago for a week and helped us with a conference that we uh, uh, put together a series of lectures where I presented some new material on the Templars. But Anyway, we spent quite a bit of time together, and one of the things, there's a couple of interesting things that happened that are new. One of them is we, we nailed down what we, we want the message to be, or he told me, I said, what do you want me to say? If I come on Jimmy Church's show, what is the message that you want us to, to convey? <clears throat> and... We went through that, and it's it's similar to the message that I've been saying on other programs, and and basically it's that the Earth is part of the interstellar community. It's one of many other planets in the solar system that is teeming with life, but in you, the grand you mean in the you mean in the Milky Way, not the solar system. Well, I guess we'll call it the. He calls it the interstellar community. Okay. And I guess you could say the Milky Way. I'm not sure exactly what the definition is, but we're talking about a lot of planets, a lot of stars, and a lot of other planets that have life on them and life forms, intelligent life forms like us. But the other thing that's important to remember is that we are part of that collective. And if something goes wrong here, it affects everybody, right? Uh, it's kind of like the butterfly effect. And, and for those that, you know, don't know what that is, it's, you know, if you could go back in time uh, and you could change something that happened, say, in the distant past, um, that would trigger a series of events going forward into the future to the present that would potentially cause a radical, uh, maybe a dramatic negative change in the world as we understand it today. So that's important. And the message is clear. We are not taking care of our planet. We're destroying it. And this is our home. And we should have a vested interest in this. You would think that's obvious, but by the way we behave as human beings, it's not obvious. Um, but it's not just us. 
there are other beings that look like us, that live here, among us. In fact, I asked him the last time he was here, I said, how many of these people that walk among us on this planet are there? He said, well, about 1% of the population in the United States. I'm not sure about the other countries, but I do know about the United States. Think about that. How many people do we have in this country? Somewhere over 400 million. Does that mean we have 4 million aliens that look like us, walking among us, living amongst us? And essentially the answer is yes. In fact, Jimmy, you could be one. I wouldn't know. I could be one. You wouldn't know. And I got to tell you, that was that was something I had to wrap my head around. Um, but, you know, getting back to the message, I think it's, you know, anybody with a, with a reasonably functioning, reflective brain knows that what we're doing to our world is not good. I mean, the earth is screaming right now. The wildfires, um, <laughs> droughts, I mean, the population, the droughts, no water. On. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, there's no question about it. The other thing that he said is they will not and have not let us destroy our, um, the planet with nuclear weapons. That's the non-starter. Everything else that we're doing to the planet eventually will kill ourselves, but the planet will rebound. But not if we get nuclear weapons involved. It'll destroy the ionosphere, and, and that will be the end of it. And we'll end up like Mars. And <laughs> we can do better, right? And apparently they don't like the way we treat each other. Um, we all know that we're one species, but we have so much racism. We have so much misogyny. We just need to treat each other better. This isn't some grand revelation either. We all know it. So let's do it and let's start taking care of our planet. Now, there's only so much that everybody can do, but what the message that was most important to me is that we don't need to get every single person on the earth on board. That's not going to happen. And in fact, the percentage of people that we need to get on board to initiate a change in the direction is actually quite small. It was a lot smaller than I thought, on the order of 1% to 2%. And so that's doable. That's very doable. And I, I you know, I, I, I take this message to heart. This person and I had some very deep conversations. Um, we actually got a little testy with each other, but we also got very close to each other because we, we talked about some sensitive things. And I want to be sure that if I go on a radio program like this, mm -hmm. that, that I'm talking about something that is as serious as this. And think about this, Jimmy. Is there anything more important than this subject matter? What's a bigger story? No, there isn't one. There, there isn't, isn't one, right? Now, but uh, Scott, so, you know, I know you and you have a skeptical mind. You have a pragmatic mind. Uh, you think sensibly. Um, you also think 3D. You're looking through stuff and you're thinking for answers, but you are... Um, uh, trying to be not always, but you try to be black and white, right? And now you jump into this. How does your brain, you know, your thought process adapt to something like this? Because it's the opposite of, of what you do professionally and, and how you carry yourself. Well, that's, that's a good question. And but you know what, Jimmy? I mean, the bottom line is, is that I'm a logical person, too. And everything that I just talked to you about makes sense to me. I mean, I, I've been a population control person for a long time. I, I used to look at the graphs and I'd say, wow, in my lifetime, we're going to get to a point where things are going to start to be difficult. And, and that time is now. And we've known it was coming. We've seen it coming. This is logical. And we just haven't done enough to, you know, to keep from getting to this point of critical mass. So 
you know, there's a philosophical side to all of this, but there's a pragmatic side to this. And uh, the pragmatic side is winning. And, you know, the truth of the matter is, you know, for whatever reason, I am now in a, a, a position where people um, kind of like what we do. They listen to what I say. I want to think that people find me somewhat credible. I like to have fun. But when it comes to stuff like this, it's not kidding around. And I wouldn't put my name on it. I wouldn't be out there. I wouldn't be on your show, Jimmy, if I didn't think this was the right thing to do. Well, for, I don't. I don't see a downside to it. No, there just, it, there certainly is not a downside. Um, but I remember uh, many times uh, you and I where we almost went into an alien ET conversation, and you always backed off, Jimmy. I don't. I I know nothing about this. It's not what I do. Can we get back to what we were talking about? Yeah, we, how yeah. many times did we do that, right? And, <laughs> well, and, hey, but, hey, man, you, you know, I was just being honest with you. Well, and, I had nothing against the topic. It just wasn't in my wheelhouse at the time. Yeah, and you called when you called me and you said, uh, Jimmy, I got to talk to you about E.T. And Janet was sitting next to you and she starts laughing. <laughs> and uh, I was like, well, are, are you OK, Jimmy? We need to talk and I have some questions and Janet is here with me, and and we need to talk to you about about aliens. I was like, wait, what? What the hell has happened to this world <laughs> that that hey, we are having this conversation? But um, uh, it it must have been difficult for you to uh, to to go in, and you did you you jumped in to the deep end of the pool pretty quickly. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, honestly, it really wasn't that difficult because I saw the evidence. It was logical. It made sense. And frankly, it kind of filled in some missing pieces of this giant puzzle that I'm working on mm -hmm. that I didn't even know were missing. And all of a sudden, I started to think in a little bit of a different way. And I'm like, holy crap. <laughs> there are some pieces here that I hadn't gotten to yet, and they fit. And so, you know what? Once that happens to me, um, let's go with it. Follow the evidence where it goes. And sometimes it'll take you a place you didn't expect. But if that trail is is solid, follow it. And that's what I've done. And here we are. Well, okay. So now if we, if we take a look at the developments over the last couple of years, since you and I had that uh, very amazing first phone call uh, with Janet, um, We've got the UAP task force report. We've got the Senate Intelligence Committee. Uh, we've got uh, some strange conversations coming from the DIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency. Um, and all of this is happening in real time. Uh, what do you, what did you, what do you make of that? And yeah. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, keep going, brother. <laughs> right, keep going. right. Because I'm, you're asking for it. I'm going to give it to you. Yes, it, it it it's it's for me. It's crazy town, right? It's just coming uh, almost too fast to uh, to digest everything that is coming in. I've wanted this to happen for a long time, but here we are, and now yeah. you are in the mix. What did you make of uh, the UAP task force report when it came out? Well, personally, based on what I had been told by our contact, it was underwhelming to say the least. Uh, the reason for that, uh, we think, was due to the CIA, which is, um, I don't know how else to say it, heavily influenced by the Vatican, uh, Jesuits, who have a vested interest in this topic because there are literally billions of people on this planet that uh, embrace Catholicism. And the concern was, it's too soon. Um, what's going to happen to our, consist our uh, constituency? What's going to happen to the message that we've been preaching for nearly 2,000 years? Th that's a problem for them. Now, some people are going to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you talking about? The Catholic Church? Come on. Well, I will tell you this, and it has been confirmed that I'm being suppressed. And the evidence I would give you is Google the Kensington Runestone, okay? 
I'm not saying this to brag. I'm telling you this because it's a fact. There is no living person walking on this planet has, that has done more research on the Kensington Runestone, published four books that contain all or some new information about this artifact. But if you go on the Kensington Runestone wiki page, you won't find my name mentioned anywhere. It will be considered a hoax. It is not a hoax, absolutely not. It is the most important historical artifact in the history of this country, arguably the world. But then you gotta ask yourself the question, what the heck's going on here? Why isn't my name there? Well, there's a reason. Look at the Newport Tower, it's a fake. No, it's not. You won't see my name there, I've done a lot there. The Narragansett Rune Stones, the Back Creek Stone, the Tucson Lead Artifacts. I mean, it goes on and on and on. The truth of the matter is we are being censored because as I've said in interviews many times, including on this show, Jimmy, is that the minute you accept the Rune Stone, the Newport Tower, any of these artifacts, what happens is it triggers a series of dominoes to fall. And one of those trails goes right to the Vatican and what happens is their message starts to crumble. So getting full circle back to what we're talking about, here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they're involved in this and they are keeping it suppressed. That's why it was basically a big nothing burger when it came out. But you and I both know that our government knows a hell of a lot more than they're telling us. I just told you what they've told me. So we know that the official message has been, been sanitized. And the question is, how long do we have to wait? When is it that you guys are going to start telling us the truth and knock off this BS, right? I'm, I'm sick and tired of it. I've been censored for years. And all I'm trying to do is get to the truth. And I think you and all the other people in this community that I am new to, and thank you for welcoming me. I, 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 I don't even feel like I deserve it sometimes. I meet somebody like Linda Moulton Howe, who is so wonderful. Um, but you guys have embraced me and we're all working together to get to the truth. But yet there are some forces out there that, you know, are working against us. I think that's the simple way to say it. Do you think, um, when you look at the totality of, of things, whether it's the Knights Templar or the hooked X or a, the discovery of America going back to uh, the 1300s and before, uh, certainly transoceanic cultures coming out of the Mediterranean and what, you know, all the way back to Jerusalem 5,000 years ago, 4,000, 3,000, all the way through to things like the Kensington Ruin Stone. All of this um, may be tough for people to accept. And you throw in uh, the UFO subject. Is the world ready? Is the world ready about the, the real knowledge of the Knights Templar or, or religion or the, the discovery of this country and other cultures around the world? Is it too much for everybody to handle? The short answer, I think, is no. Um, think about it like this, okay? And, and, and I did want to just do one thing. There was a, a, a friend of mine who appeared as a guest on the show. His name is Stephen Sora and his wife, Terry. Stephen just passed away here um, on the 20th. Um, he wrote a number of books, The Lost Colony of the Templars, Lost Treasure of the Knights Templar, Rosicrucian America, and he appeared as a guest, and he was a wonderful guy. And, you know, his wife texted me, and she said, Scott, I just want you to know that Terry passed away. And it hit me really hard, right? Like losing Charlie Watts. I'm a Stones fan. When people say Stones are the Beatles, I'm a Stones guy. Right. So it, it was tough to hear that, right? And when people get bad news something devastating happens, it hits you, you know, right in the gut and it hits you hard. But what, what happens next? Well, life goes on, right? You grieve, you mourn, um, you spend time with loved ones, and then, you know, you got to get up the next day and you got to go on. So the point is, I think people are very resilient. And, you know, I, I think the, the toughest part is for people who have very strong faith are gonna probably have the hardest time digesting some of this. But I think the vast majority of people out there, and I think that number is gonna increase as time goes on, are going to be surprised. They're gonna to have to step back and reflect. But then after a while, if it makes sense, like it did for me, you accept it 
and embrace it and you move on. And, and, and the truth of the matter is we need to get on this and we need to get on it now. And uh, I think people will be able to handle it. Not everybody, but I think a hell of a lot more people will be able to deal with this um, and be ready to talk more about it than maybe we think. That's my personal opinion. Let's take our break right here. Our guest tonight, the one and only Scott Walter. Talking E.T.? Yes, we are. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Going to take a quick break. More with Scott when we come back. Stay with us. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Mental Guard on JimmyChurchRadio.com. This is KGRA Digital Broadcasting Station. Salt Lake City, Utah, Van Buren, Arkansas. Why is it we're not very good with our health regimen until it's too late? We don't put oil in the car until the engine blows up. When the body's out of balance, your health is not so good. Give your body some love. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Try our Life Change Tea, which cleanses you from harmful intruders. A clean colon is one of the ways to bring the body in balance. We also carry organic supplements to help you get where you need to go. So do your body a favor. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. You can even visit our sales page to save some dough. Uh, Does anybody call money dough anymore? Anyway, if you're looking for short, helpful health tips, go to YouTube and punch in Health Matters Now. That's Health Matters Now. So, log on to GetTheTea.com, shop, get balanced, then learn some cool tips at Health Matters Now. You'll be glad you did. That's GetTheTea.com. Your contact for current news and trending topics. KGRARadio.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I only drink Fade to Black blend coffee from River Moon. Just click on the River Moon Coffee banner at jimmychurchradio.com. Promo code F2B Blend. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. KGRARadio.com. When you're in the house for longer periods of time, you can see them flying or running across the floor. Ooh, yuck. They're unhealthy, gross, and disgusting. Bugs. I loathe bugs. We keep a clean home, but occasionally bugs show up. Well, I found something that is tougher than bugs. Orange Guard. On contact, it kills hidden bugs, including ants, roaches, and fleas. Plus, Orange Guard is a residual repellent. All of the ingredients of Orange Guard are on the FDA generally recognized as safe list. Orange Guard may be used around food, humans, and pets. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Orange Guard, available at orangeguard.com, Whole Foods, and Ace Hardware. Gold loves chaos, uncertainty, and disarray. History shows us what gold does when people aren't sure, aren't sure about the government, the stock market, their jobs, or their retirement savings. Our national debt is skyrocketing. Gold and other precious metals are a defense measure against inflation and a stock market that might take years to recover. So what can you do right now to protect yourself? Call United Gold Group. We offer gold and other precious metals delivered securely with in 72 hours. Are you worried about the stock market? We can also help you set up a real gold or silver IRA or a 401k. Safe and secure. United Gold Group makes gold ownership affordable. Call now and get up to $2,500 in free gold or silver with a qualified IRA. Call 800-753-8534. That's 800-753-8534 or visit unitedgoldgroup.com. You want to know a secret? I love ponies. I really love ponies. I'm serious. I couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush. Why fade to black? 
Because you never got that pony, damn it! This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. Welcome back, Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Scott Walter is with us. We've done a little bit of everything tonight. But I'm going to jump right into Scott's wheelhouse and one of my favorite subjects, which is the Knights Templar. And uh, I'm going to start off here, though, uh, with you, Scott, and say this. When is history going to wake up and look at the mountains of evidence that is all around the world about the Knights Templar and 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 start to recognize uh, what has been going on. Why the suppression? What's the big deal? Well, we've already talked about it, Jim. Um, the big suppression is largely due to the church. There, um, <clears throat> there are some other powers that be <clears throat> that are uh, impacting the world <laughs> that we live in, but. You know, before before we touch on the Templars, Jim, <clears throat> I need to ask you a question. This is a hypothetical. We're going back. Here we to go. This. Number two. Here it goes. This is number two. Number two. <clears throat> Let me ask you a question. Let's say you were contacted by some people that you got to know that were cool people, um, smart um warm, friendly, very intelligent, and they told you that they were able to communicate with extraterrestrials, that they could get guidance, that you could have a direct conduit to those entities out there. Would you, first of all, would you work with those people? And secondly, would you talk about it on your radio show? Wow. Uh, okay. Well, the short answer is yes, that has happened. Uh, but the, the, the long answer is um, you would have to go through a stringent vetting process, just like anything else, which is difficult to do when you're dealing with stuff that is sometimes unvettable. Right. Okay. So you have that, that problem, yes. um, out of the gate, but let's say, and I'm going to get back to you as quick as I can, but let's say everything vets, everything's cool. Everything, you know, and, and this moment has arrived. Do I do it? Do I talk about it? Absolutely. And I have done it before and I will do it again. If the situation is the correct one, I have absolutely no problems with it. I will fight the man. Yes. Okay, well, I, I knew what the answer to that question was. And you're absolutely right that the vetting process is critical. And let's just say you ever come across that situation again, or if I have had that experience, or if I ever have that experience, uh, the vetting process could go this way. If they truly have the, the powers that they purport to have. One way that I would suggest is to ask questions about things that have happened that only you know about to see if they yes. could answer those questions. That's right. Or ask questions about things that will happen in a questioning way. If I do this, is that the smart move? Could this happen? Could that happen? That's that's the way I I uh, have a uh, would approach it, and I think you know what I'm talking about. I and do. I wanted to I wanted to put you on the spot for a reason, and I, that that's that's something that we'll talk about down the road. How about that? Sure, sure. Um, but there's a there's there's another piece to this though, Scott. Go ahead. You have um, 
Uh, you have maps, you have seen maps, you've seen books, you've seen documentation, you've got letters, you've seen letters, you've written about this, you've done shows about this. And Scott, you're not the only one. This, this information is out there and, uh, it's a, it's a global thing. And, and the amount of stuff that you have seen, just imagine what you haven't seen. And, and what is out there. Um, yeah. I, 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 for, for me personally, I just don't get it where the history is there, the evidence is there, but uh, the Vatican maybe is, is a big deal and a big part of this. But there's another part where the media doesn't want to, you know, the, 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 the right. publishing companies don't want to, you know, the, 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 you know, the schools don't want to, you know, the Smithsonian doesn't want to get them. You know, it's like, it comes at you from all direction and, and I don't get it. It seems like we've got an incredible story, um, uh, a, a great history. Let's, let's talk about it and let's try to figure things out. I, I don't, I, I just don't understand. It's one of the most incredible stories ever. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, Jim, this is this is the 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 big conundrum that we have here, that uh, I've been dealing with for for twenty years. Um, why aren't more people interested in this, and how do we get this message out there when it seems like we have uh, forces out there, big forces, powerful forces that that don't want this to come out? <clears throat> and I guess I decided a long time ago. First and foremost. Um, I've had it with the academics. Um, <laughs> and when it comes to things like the Rune Stone, the Newport Tower and all that, these people, I, I mean, I've had these frustrating discussions with them because they, they've accused me of not, you know, following scientific method. And I just, excuse me, <laughs> I've run a materials forensic lab. I'm a licensed professional. I mean, give me a break, right? And, but yet this is what I get. And, you know, I talk to them about, well, well, wait a minute here. And, and I, I try to have these discussions. Let's, let's look at the facts here. And it, it, it just doesn't go anywhere because one of the things that frustrates the hell out of me is they refuse to understand that if, if you don't know what something is, it's okay to say, I don't know. I need more information. There isn't enough evidence to convince me one way or the other. That's okay. I've done it myself, right? Maybe I'll call a customer and say, you know what, this concrete sample, can you take one from this spot and, and so on. And then when you do that, let's say new evidence comes in and there is a boatload of new evidence, for example, on the runestone in multiple disciplines, all converging at the same place. But when new evidence comes in, that demands a different conclusion. What many of these academics don't understand is that when that evidence comes in, you go where the evidence takes you. You don't sit there and stamp your feet and you know just resist it. And it doesn't mean that if you do change your mind based on this new evidence, that you're stupid. In fact, it means you're smart mm -hmm. because that's what a true scientist does. Mm -hmm. and, and because at the end of the day, Jimmy, and this is the final point that I think you'll get, the truth is not about you being right. It's about getting the right answer. Um, too much of this problem is what I call problems of the human condition. And that's, that's just the nature of human beings. But if we're going to talk about science, then let's do the damn science. Follow the evidence where it goes and don't worry about the consequences. If you got to rewrite the damn history books, then rewrite them. What's the problem? Right. It, when we look at uh, uh, something as simple as the Kensington ruin stone, um, I remember, I don't know if we did this in a private conversation or we talked about it on the air. It, it's been so long, but, but that in of itself, if it was, something as simple as a, 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 a land marker, right? Something as simple as that, then is it possible that we should be calling the United States New Scandinavia, 
right? I mean, is there some political interest involved in that that would be as dramatic as as that? Where this is going to go to the Hague? We're going to do a world. Uh, there's going to be right <laughs> that, no, that we were there first, and and we claimed that, and 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 now we need to talk about it. But yeah. You no, Jim, you are 100% right. And in fact, about two years ago, I had a guy call me in Canada who was a lawyer who wanted to file a lawsuit in an international court. I'm not making this up. Right. On, on behalf of the Kensington Runestone saying that, hey, this this claim that we, you know, this this nation that we have now doesn't belong to you. It right, belongs right. To, to interests over in Europe. And I don't remember the details of the argument that he made, but it actually did make some sense. Now, I wasn't ready to get involved in something like that, but you ask a really, really good question because th the natives didn't carve that. So the Native Americans didn't claim the land. Somebody from a different country did. But But here's the truth of the matter. The Templars didn't come from one country. The Templars, just like Freemasonry, we welcome people from all walks of life, from all nationalities, from all religions, uh, whatever, right? So the Templars operated the same way. You took an obligation that you were going to conduct yourself a certain way with certain ethics or morals, whatever. They didn't care if you were Native American, African American, Asian, they didn't care. We don't care. And so now you got sort of a different argument. You can't really go to one country now, right? Because you're talking about people of all walks of life, of all races, of all nationalities. So now maybe we come back and maybe this is that free Templar state as it states in the journals that we have. And uh, this is a place where people could come practice whatever religion they wanted. And they were free from the tyranny of the monarchs of Europe. I think a lot of people, especially today, forget that we fought a revolution against a dictator. And we got people in this nation that seem to think that we want to go back to something like that. I mean, what that tells me is not that these people are stupid, but maybe they just don't know the full story and the history of how this nation was founded. And, you know, getting to your, uh, your, your, your intro here about what are we working on now with regard to the Templars, I'm going to just show you something, Jimmy. You're going to have to describe it to your audience. I'm going to put you on the spot. This is a brand new page from a document we just got. Now look at that. That's an island. Is, is that all? Is that Oak Island? Nope. But let me show you another picture. Okay, hold on. Oh, get now. That's not real. See, that's a hoax. <laughs> that's right there. That's right fake. Now. That's you fake. There's no way that this. that's real. Is this that is real? Brand new, dude. This is brand new. Brand new. Um, okay. All right. Also, Hold it back up. Okay. So what uh, Scott just showed me wait. an old, uh, hand drawn map of an Island. Wait, I got to take the name off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I swear to God, <laughs> I was getting ready. I, I was going to, I was going to do a screen grab. Let me hit record. Oh, he already <laughs> took it off. Okay. Now, but, but anyway, um, so, I, and there's an X on the Island, by the way, there's two, uh, there, yes, there is. There's two lines on the bottom of the island, like the Roman numeral two. Yes. Uh, ah, see, Scott? See, I'm pretty good, aren't I? You are very good. Now, I'm okay. looking at now, a now, Google. Would uh, you agree that those things are probably a match? Uh, 100% absolutely. Uh, and again, Scott, too good to be true. Okay. Now, not it's not too good to be true. It's a hundred percent true. Okay, so what's the age of the hand drawn map? What what are okay. we talking about there? This piece of paper. Now look closely at the paper. Can you see the lineation? Yes, going I can. In yes, two directions. Uh huh. Okay. Yep. 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 This yep, yep. this this uh, document was written down in 1885, and Basically, I can tell you the context of what this is. Um, 
Now, what, uh, can you tell me what part of the world that's in? Uh, right now, it is in Afghanistan. What? Okay, continue. <laughs> continue. All right. So let me just tell you briefly what the story is. Now, we have a set of documents, journals, that basically there's over 160 pages. There are over 300 names. There's over 400 years of material uh, presented. Uh, these journals were passed down father to son through two families, five generations of Sinclairs. Again, ten, the Sinclairs. Okay. Sinclairs and 10 generations of a family by the name of Weems. Um, it was a father to son tradition. And Sinclair brought these treasures over to North America, buried them in multiple places. Uh, we thought we knew what the number of locations was. We now realize with this new material that it was way more than we thought, including that island I just showed you. Um, and then the next seceding generations had to follow this tradition of visiting the Western lands to check on those treasures. You visited the Western lands twice in your lifetime, once with your father and once with your son. And the other part of this that is so fantastic is that these people, these Templars, bonded and developed a deep spiritual bond with the indigenous people of this continent. They bonded through ritual. They practice Freemasonry just like the Templars did. A lot of people don't know that. They do to this day. They also um, bonded through strategic intermarriage. Um, the fact of the matter is the Templars carried the sacred bloodline in their veins, and they put it into the natives through intermarriage to protect it over here. Now, the Jesuits get involved, the church gets involved. There was genocide that happened with the natives that we all know after uh, we started the colonies here. And a lot of people don't realize this, but one of the reasons why the uh, Jesuits were so interested in eliminating the natives was to get rid of the witnesses and this sacred bloodline. Now, you, we've all read the stories recently about these church-run schools where the natives and they found mass graves with children buried yeah. in them? Up in Canada, yes. Right. Yes. Well, it was the same thing here, and this is going to come out down here in the future. You wait. You uh, Remember, I told you here, you're going to hear about this. But the point is, is that there's a larger story here. And believe it or not, Jimmy, I'm going to tell you right now for the first time on this show, in the documents that we now have, the Templar story, the Venus families from which they came, and the extraterrestrial subject matter. Mm-hmm. They're going to, well, you know, everything is connected, first off. Right? Yes. <laughs> everything yes. is connected. Yes. Everything is connected. But uh, you know that there are those out there uh, that are going to go, okay, now Scott is connecting the Templars to the UFO, the ETs. And that's going to be his next book. Um, but everything is connected. Uh, let's 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 back up for a second. I, I want to go back to this map. Also, let me look at my clock. Okay, you held up to the camera before the show. Nobody saw this. Uh, a leather purse. Paper. It's paper. No, with with uh, no no with uh, oh, letters on it. Initials. This? No, you held up. Oh, 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 this. Yeah, that, that. Oh, I thought yeah. it was real. Okay. It is real. Uh, well, yeah, but no, that's a photograph. But I thought. Oh, 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 oh. oh you right, did it right. so quick. I thought it was the actual. Oh, oh, no. Well, we don't have this one yet, but this was inside of this. Okay. And, and okay. whose initials are those? Uh, a guy by the name of, it's on the first page. Can you grab it for me, Jan? 
What? Flip it to the very first page. Oh, John James Alston Weebs. Okay, James Alston Weebs. Uh, jaw is also John Anthony West, right? <laughs> and I was like, man, Whoa. maybe it's John Anthony West. Synchronicity. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, totally, totally. Okay, so the map was in that leather satchel. All the maps were. So there's more. And, okay. And, and. Now, did you say okay, wait, 1354, April 18th, 1354? Is that what I see there? 1353. Oh, it's a journal. Exactly. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. So remember I, I told you we had a set of journals. I remember we did we did a couple of shows on this actually. Yes. yes. And this is another copy that was tracked down that in in we think around 1830 these original journals that were in the Weems family was copied and there were three copies that were made. We think this is another copy. What what we did not know was we actually had maps with the other set that we already have. Now we have another copy, but it has 10 more maps than the other one did. And and, and, and there were missing pages in the other journal too as well. Yes, and, there are some. Yeah, I, and I remember that. Okay, so let me refresh uh, to the audience. Uh, we, You know what, Scott? You're going to tell Janet that we're going into overtime. We can't leave on a cliffhanger <laughs> like this. But um, let me refresh with the audience. Uh, Scott and I did a series of shows uh, a couple of years ago about the set of journals. Um, and it's a very complex story. It is insane. Yes. There's so many, yes. so many people and locations, uh, modern. Uh, uh, and this went back to 1968, 66, 68. Well, that's now that's oh, the Cremona document. But but hold on, that's, hold on. That's something separate. But yeah. it is separate. But it's all part of the same story, is what yes, I, what I'm getting yes, to. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so it spans decades, and the overarching uh, theory here is that the Sinclair family was coming over to the United States like it was nothing. They were yeah. jumping in boats and cruising over and hanging out and going back to England. So and Scotland. So Scotland. 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 So we're going to continue this conversation because what I was just shown here by Scott, I'm not letting this get away. So we will do all <laughs> of that. Let's uh, let's take our break here, Scott, and let's just swing right back and pick up where we are leaving off. And I give thanks to. Scott's producer, Janet, for allowing this to happen. This is Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. We're doing overtime with Scott Walter. Yeah, Stay let's with do us. It. Let's do it, man. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I take Life Change Tea supplements every single day. It's what I do. Click on their banner at jimmychurchradio.com. This is Jimmy Church, and I invite you to attend the 20th Annual Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo live and in person this September 17th, 18th, and 19th at the LAX Airport Hilton. Connect with exhibitors, community, thought leaders, and friends as we begin to recreate the world. You can also watch the expo from the comfort of your own home, live stream from the main stage in Los Angeles and from the main stage in London. Truly a global simulcast event broadcast around the world. 
Live stream and in-person expo tickets are available now. I'll be your host all weekend long from Los Angeles. And on Friday, it's my Ancient Secrets and Earth Mysteries themed segment with James Keenan, Caroline Corey, and William Henry. And on Saturday, Daniel Sheen and I sit down for a one-on-one interview live. We have an amazing lineup of 25 speakers, including Bashar, Gail Thackeray, Kimberly Meredith, Whitley Strieber, Stephen Bassett, Daniel Brinkley, and Lisa Gar. Please visit ConsciousLifeExpo.com for tickets and info. That's ConsciousLifeExpo.com. And use that promo code JIMMY for a special discount. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. This is Billy Carson with ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Forbidden Knowledge TV has just reached its one-year anniversary. That's right, one year. And as a show of appreciation, we are giving all new subscribers a free 30-day trial of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. That's 30 days to binge watch thousands of movies, documentaries, conferences, workshops, lectures, yoga classes, meditation courses, and so much more. So log on to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv from your computer or mobile device or get the Forbidden Knowledge TV app on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, iTunes, or Google Play today and use coupon code 30 days free. That's coupon code 30 days free on Forbidden knowledge.tv today are you intrigued by paranormal talk radio you love the new paranormal radio app from talk stream live you'll find a great selection of talk shows covering ufos ghosts strange phenomena and much more download the paranormal radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment including the network you're listening to right now the Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. KGRARadio.com. <laughs> This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. Scott, you're having too much fun, man. So during the break... Scott is showing me uh, a series of hand-drawn maps, obviously uh, very aged, and then the Google equivalent of uh, Google Maps and Satellite of of these maps and this, uh, well, a a lot of islands, by the way. Uh, He's having a really good time just making me jealous, and I know that this can't be shared with the audience, and that part kind of sucks, uh, but Scott also enjoys uh, what he is doing right now with the big teaser. That's a that's a lot of stuff, Scott. Yeah. It, well, this is just the tip of the iceberg, really. Um, and, and it really goes to the the heart of this story um, of the Templars and bringing their treasures over and using it to found this nation. But uh, you know, that's 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 the global story the rune stone is a part of it the newport tower is absolutely a part of it all these artifacts that we were talking about are 
are interconnected to this story. But what's happening is these these artifacts that we just talked about um, that are being suppressed, they're not being accepted. Um, they're all part of this story. They've been screaming to us, trying to tell us what's going on. And um, people don't listen. And there are the powers that be are telling us, hey, there's nothing to see here. So let it go. It's all a hoax. Well, that's that's bullshit. And um, now what's happened, Jim, is we've got we've got the story nailed. I can't go into the details now, but I will tell you this. This is absolutely the biggest story I've ever been involved in next to the E.T. thing. It's the most interesting. It's got so many different pieces. When we bring this to the world, people are going to absolutely go crazy. I'm not kidding you. I, I'm not overplaying it. It's well, it's I've just seen incredible. I've just seen a series of maps and uh, the the modern uh, version of these islands and these land formations. Um, okay, uh, I've got a bunch of questions, so let me let me just start with a, uh, some some backstory here. Uh, where did where did you get the maps? These maps were inside of a uh, a journal that we just got literally yesterday. I'm not making this up. I just got this yesterday. We don't even have everything that we're going to have, but the person that shared this with us is a direct descendant of this family. Uh, this person is serving in our military right now. The reason that it's taken a while for the material to get to us is because right now this person is uh, uh, a military pilot and he's he's over in Afghanistan of evacuating um, American citizens, people that supported us during our uh, issues with Afghanistan. This person, in my mind, is is a hero, and it shouldn't be a surprise because he's connected to uh, a lineage of, of uh, a family and generations of people that we are going to bring to the world. We're going to introduce them, and they are every bit uh, American heroes as George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, all these people that we lionize, our founding fathers, uh, they didn't do the dirty work. These people did. They need to be recognized, and they're going to be recognized. And um, it may be, you know, after they're, uh, they've left this earth, but it doesn't matter. They deserve the recognition and our appreciation for a job well done that helped produce this nation that that we all live in and love. Now, the uh, the islands that you were just showing me, um, are these uh, North American? Yes. Um, uh, uh, from Florida up to Canada? Or uh, I'm, I'm guessing East Coast. I'm going East Coast let's, first. Let's say East East Coastline. Right, yes. East Coastline. And, and how many... Uh, man, that's a crazy amount that I just saw. How many uh, are there in total? Now, I, I realize you got these yesterday, but I also saw numbers <laughs> on each one uh, with post-its. Yep. So you're going through this information now. Yes. Uh, um, how many uh, islands uh, and and maps are there? Well, it looks like in this journal there are 15. Now, we have some other documents we've had for about five years um, <laughs> that's connected to this particular uh, journal, and there were five. And all five of the ones we already had, we matched up with five here. That means there are 10 additional maps and 10 locations. We have found 10 of the 15 we're still working on the other five, but as you can see, we've made some good progress. Yeah, you have, now, you have. Well, take yeah. me, okay, so how are you doing this? Um, is there information on this map uh, to point you in a geographic area, or are you going up the coastline on Google painstakingly looking at every single island one by one? Well, that would take forever because yes. there are probably thousands of islands if you go all the way from Florida up uh, up into Canada. But 
The truth of the matter is, I can't go into too many specifics, but I will tell you that there is a specific geographic region that we are looking at uh, for a reason, and we're hitting pay dirt so far. We're, we're not there yet, but um, uh, uh, some of them I recognize right away. There's like three or four. Mm -hmm. I went, oh, that's that, that's that, that's that. Because we'd already looked at them, we already had those maps. Mm -hmm. But the others, like the first one I showed you, um, that one I had never seen before, and I, it took me a couple of hours, and eventually, boom! I, I said, "There it is," and and so that's that's kind of how it's gone. Um, okay, this now, is okay. this is really fun. You said it before. I'm having a blast with this. I love this shit, man. I, man, I'm, I'm I'd blown. Do. Uh, Scott, I'm blown away uh, with what uh, I was just shown. Um, now, let's. I, I I I saw the close-ups of uh, the surface of uh, the paper. Um, yeah. Now, let's let are, are all of the yeah, man. That is just crazy town to me. That's uh, that's old paper. That's old paper. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's crazy. Okay. Um, this journal with this section of the maps, what is the date on the journal? You mentioned earlier, uh, late 1800s, um, 1885, 1885. In fact, in fact, Jen, get that. I'll show them the, um, the Agnes journal. <clears throat> um, what's, what's interesting about this particular journal, remember it was passed down uh, this is the great grandson of the last guy who wrote in the journals that we had. Um, so this guy, you know, J A W jaw, he, no, not that one. Yeah, this one. So what happened is this guy was a reverend. He was a Methodist minister and he had these journals, the first 13 books, there's a total of 20 books. The first 13 are written in Latin. The next uh, two are written in Old English. I remember and, this, right? Yes, yes. And yes, then, yes, and yes. then the last five are in Modern English, right? So right. what this guy did, this reverend, he reached out to a nun, a Catholic nun. Her name, um, well, I'll leave her name out for now. But anyway, she was uh, born in Scotland. She then was taken over and was educated and raised in Montreal and eventually ended up in Illinois, where this jaw lived. And he, he was a, a, you know, he was a member of the clergy. She was a nun. And so what he did was he hired her to translate these journals that he could not read. And they, they formed a deal that is in this journal. It's a diary. 1880. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it, it, got it. Yes, okay. I do. I do. Now, I do. Okay, now this is not the other thing I showed you. That that J.A.W. book, that is what she copied. This is her personal journal. Now, what she did was she agreed to copy these journals or translate them from Latin and Old English into, Mo into English uh, for hay, for her horses, and wood. And in this notebook that I just showed you, she has some very interesting entries that she's writing down over. It took her five months to do the work. Now that looked and, like it was published. Oh, wait, no, that was what it was is that was like a diary that you could get in a store and grab one of the other pages. Let me show you. Well, let me see that front page again. Yeah. Hand me the front page again. Okay. Yeah. Just grab them. Just thank you. Th and then thank, the you okay. <laughs> thank you, Janet. Thank you, Janet. Uh, no, hold up. Secretary here. Okay. okay, it says Canadian. Oh, I got it. Okay, yeah. Canadian okay. Pocket now Diary here's, here's from 1885. The cover. Right. That's, cl that's closed up, and this is the first page, and then these are what the pages look like. And that's friggin' various. that's friggin' authentic as the day is long. Well, yeah, of course it is. Yeah. What I have the this. hell, man? I have I have this book in my possession right now. It's yeah. Go ahead and, go ahead and oh, you have more. the you have the actual book. Yeah, it's down in the vault. It's in. It's take a left. It's on. <laughs> it's right above chest height. It's down in the vault. <laughs> I do. I have a walk-in vault, man. You better. Where do you, where do you think I put these alien artifacts? <laughs> I don't just leave them on the damn shelves. <laughs> <laughs> 
That is crazy what you just showed. You must yeah. be losing your mind right now. Oh, yes, we are. And, you know, it's it's you know, it's one thing to just get a journal that has all this stuff in it. That in itself is amazing. But to have another document that gives the document that you have context. Yes. Now we know the story behind how this document came to be. And it's just a great story. It's fantastic. Um, and My actually, mind is blown right I now. Know, there is, and at the end of that journal, wow, she wrote a letter to the Reverend, and she talks about her, her you know, what she did. She's going to be transferred to Philadelphia, so she's like saying goodbye. This is the last thing I'll I'll do for you. I, I you know, I've had a great friendship with you, and then she talks about her feelings about the story. Now, stop and think about this. She's a Catholic nun, right? And she's writing about Templars and Templar treasure. Right, right, right. And right, she right. says, at one point, she says, she says, God has told me the story is true. They, they, I, I, I am blown away. Ah, there it is. Open it up. Let me see it. This is the original book. So this thing is 200 and almost 250 years old. No, no, 100 and, or 150 100. years old. Yeah. There it is. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. And it's just a little pocket. Book, yes. Right? It's just, it's a, it's a little pocket diary. It's this big. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's leather. It's, it's got know, a, it's, it's old. It's kind of coming apart a little bit, <laughs> but um, we have to get this back to the family at some point. Dude, that is priceless. So, so gracious to share everything with us. Read that part. Oh, let's see. Oh, yeah, here's an entry. I should tell Bishop about the journals, but I made a promise. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> all right, no more. That's all he gets. We're oh, done. It's, it. it's so funny. Here's this post from TB. Just came up 15 seconds ago on Twitter. Please give us a hint. It's Scott Walter. I'm doing the best that I can. <laughs> and I think I've done pretty good tonight. All uh, right, Jimmy, this is the third time. Okay, here probably it comes. the last time. If you were me, what would you do? Uh, I wouldn't come on this show and talk about it. <laughs> right? Uh, this is... Uh, this. Okay. Yeah, it, you... Uh, uh, you, you know what you do? You shut the doors. You and Janet, uh, go through everything, uh, page by page by page, and take yep. as long as it takes to to get through. That there are, there must be hundreds of nuggets that only happen by rereading, relooking at it. Because if you do a cursory pass through. Right, and you think you've got it all? You don't. You've got to go back and look at it again, look at it again, hand it over to Janet, have her put her eyes on it, and things start to reveal themselves. Um, yes. So that's what I would do. I would shut the door. I would uh, uh, start ordering Uber Eats. <laughs> right <laughs> now, uh, 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 but Scott, okay, in, in if if we're going to look at this in its totality. What is, what do you feel is going on here? Is this, you know, 15 treasure maps? Is it 15 maps of, of something else? Of, you know, what is the significant of each location in these maps? If you were a betting man, what do you think uh, we're looking at here? Well, they're definitely treasure maps. There's no question about that because the journals tell us that's what they are. Uh, what I did not realize, and, and I, I, I want to be careful because we're hoping to get this on television uh, at some point, but um, what I can tell you is that the, the, you know, the legend of Earl Henry is, is absolutely true. The details of what he did w is what we're trying to understand. We thought we understood the story uh, from the first set of journals, but now it looks like, well, there's, there were a lot more treasures that they brought over. Uh, we know that he came over uh, three times. Earl Henry came over in 1354. Mm -hmm. And then it was almost 40 years later, 
he came over again in 1395, and then he came again in 1398. That was the did, last time that he came. Did he there. Ca- and he came with his son, right? No, he he went with his father. He, went, he was the son. He went he with his father. Son. That's yes, right. Okay, yes. I remember. And his father, according to this, both of these journals, because we have both of them saying the same thing, his father came over six times. So imagine that. I mean, look, you, you said it earlier, Jim. These guys were coming over here, and it wasn't that big of a deal. Now, the truth is it was very dangerous. We learned in the journals that they encountered storms, and they lost a number of ships uh, on the num- multiple voyages. So it wasn't like a walk in the park. It was serious business. It was very dangerous. You don't sure. screw around on the sea. You don't screw around on the sea today. No, right? you don't. You do not. But. But that said, they were coming over here all the time. And because of their ideology that was that was not Catholic, the Templars, the biggest if there's one big uh, misnomer about the Templars is that they were the good Catholics. They were not. They actually embraced an ancient faith. We've talked about this for before, symbolized by the hooked X, monotheistic dualism, where they venerated the sacred feminine or the feminine aspect of the Godhead. And the reason they got along so well with the natives is the natives are matriarchal cultures. They venerate the goddess and the feminine aspect as well. This is why they were able to bond. This is why they had free reign to go all over this continent because the natives let them, right, essentially, for 400 years before settlement. So that's why we have all this evidence all over the damn country. The runestones halfway across the continent. And some people say, wow, they couldn't have got there. Uh, well, actually, they did. And now we understand why and how and the whole picture's coming together, and it is the best damn story I've ever heard in my life. What I don't want to get into, though, is probably the most fantastic part of the story took place just before the Revolutionary War, and it will just knock your socks off. I can't talk about it right now, but when I can, Jim, you just better be ready, brother, because it'll. It, I will read you some of the passages and you will get goosebumps. I guarantee it. You will absolutely freak out. I want to be the narrator on the TV series. I want to be yeah, the Robert. We, Co- we need somebody with a with a deep voice. Somebody need, that I, knows how to speak can put passion and hey, I know a guy. Yeah, Jimmy Church. Yeah, I want to be the fifth Beatle in this one. Um, uh, uh, Scott, when we talk about treasure, and I don't want to run out of time. Um, uh, of course, we think of, you know, uh, pieces of eight and gold and, and goblets and, and, and jewels and gemstones. Um, and certainly that may be part of it. But when we're talking about treasure, one, one man's treasure is another man's, you know, one man's steak is another man's hamburger. Right. So, so what are we talking about when we say treasure and we're going on this treasure hunt? Well, to me, the treasure is the true story. To me, the treasure is, you know, having things like the Kensington Runestone accepted for the incredible artifact that it is. But when we are talking about specifically the treasure. Yeah, X marks the spot. I saw right. the what, X what they, on the what map. What did they bury there? Right. Well, the, the truth is, Jim, I know what they buried there because in our journals, we have a treasure list. It tells us exactly what is buried at these locations. Now, I can't tell you that, but here's what I can tell you. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Janet, get me a treasure list. (laughs) Janet, get me a treasure list. You dare. Janet, get me a treasure list. Who loves you, Janet? I do. (laughs) Not not Scott. (laughs) Don't be using that charm on her because it'll work, so stop. Uh, I'm telling you right now, Janet's a keeper. Janet... (laughs) <laughs> Janet, give me a treasure list. Uh, what, okay. uh, uh, ignore him. Ignore him. Just ignore him. That's right. Fine. Okay. Uh, All right. Okay. Now, having said that, Jim, you asked me, I'm going to tell you some treasure. Okay? okay. But let me just put it in context. Okay. We've got three now, minutes. Okay. It won't take that long. Okay. All right. So in my latest book, uh, Shameless Plug, Cryptic Code of the Templars in America, we talk about the Cremona document. 
And we have documents that tell us about the six knights that went under the south wall and the treasures that they recovered. Mm -hmm. They were inside ossuaries, which are bone boxes, right, from the first century uh, Essene people that had a very unique burial practice. Inside these four boxes, I can tell you this, they found gold in one of them. They found scrolls, documents in another one. They found instrumentation, instruments, navigation devices, devices using for construction, and a cryptex for various coded documents, for deciphering coded documents. Right. And in the fourth box, they found the remains of a human, a person whose head had been severed with a large, heavy axe. On the side of the box was a name. The name carved was Jan. There was no J back then. John the Baptist, probably. And in the document, it says, Bernard bags the bones. He took these bones. Now, here's something that's very interesting I'm going to tell you about Freemasonry. All of our lodges in Freemasonry are dedicated to the holy saints John, John the Evangelist and John the Baptist. But prior to 1600, our lodges were only dedicated to John the Baptist. Now, you can put that together yourself. What that suggests is that Freemasonry evolved directly from Knights Templarism, because where would we have gotten this dedication to the Holy St. John? And here's one more fun fact for you. One of the charges that the, the, the Catholic Church made against the Templars was that they worshipped the head of an idol. That's right. And the truth is, they did. <laughs> How was that? Is that three minutes or less? Uh, okay, so it, it each one of those, I didn't see X's on all of them, but I did see them on some. They're on all of them. The, they're on all of them. And are we to deduce that X marks the spot? And I, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, it, it, it's something that makes a lot of sense. But is that what we are talking about here? Hell yes. Can I go to one of the islands with you? Uh, you know what, Jim? I, I, I think we might be able to make that happen. Now, if if everything goes the way we hope it's going to go, and you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm, I do. I, I, I think we can make that happen. I would love because it. Because you've, you've been such a great supporter. If all this happens, um, we need some strong backs and weak minds. Are you with me? I, I, I am both. <laughs> me too. All right. <laughs> Scott, thank you so much. And, and please give my best to Janet. Um, I know that uh, we've got some things that we're working on and, uh, and we'll announce things as we move along in the months ahead. But right. uh, you'll be back with this very soon uh, with some more exciting things to talk about. I promise everybody it won't be as cryptic uh, next time around. Scott, thank you so much, my friend. Happy reading. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, thank you so much, man. I've had so much fun tonight. And thank you for rolling with the flow. I dropped that on you. You did not know that was coming. No, I did not. And you, and you handle it like a champ, just like you always do. That was my eyes, man. <laughs> thank you so much, Scott. Give my All best right, to brother. Janet, man. Have a great night. Okay. And we'll, we'll be right. talking this week. Thank you so much. All right. Talk to you later, brother. Scott Walter. Again, uh, Scott's websites are over at jimmychurchradio.com, hookedx.com, scottwalteranswers.blogspot.com. What a great night tonight. Thank you so much, Scott. Uh, that was an amazing show. That's my kind of show right there. Fade to Black is produced by Hill J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Kevin. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vito, and Mark D. Kovar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy. Spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. Syndication is KGRA, the planet. This broadcast is only copyrighted 2021 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe 
without written permission from Fade to Black of the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tomorrow night, Anjali, right here on Fade to Black for the first time. Get ready for that. Until then, I want everybody to be safe. It's time to fade to black.